What's up, y'all? Kofi Kingston here, and I would love to have a drink with Wrestling on the Rocks, depending on what that drink is, preferably non-alcoholic, you know? How's it going? I'm Kelsey Quarry, Shane. Soda. I would love to have a drink with Wrestling on the Rocks. Maple syrup. Bella. I would never have a drink with Wrestling on the Rocks. No, 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 no. We did it. Welcome to episode one. Yay. Don't worry. Oh. Episode one, technical difficulties. Take a drink. No big deal. Everybody relax. Everybody just calm down. It's strictly episode one again. Here we go. Whenever we're ready to go live, we'll go live. Just kidding. I'm just, I'm just fucking around. But yes, we are here. I am at Ref Marsh. We are at WOTR, the show. Today, we are back. Last week, if you keep track of our episode ones, we had a watch along with me and Miss Amanda Jane. Uh, we covered a few matches that we have been arguing about and talked about in the chat a number of times and just kind of went over. So we had uh, was it CM Punk and, and Cena uh, in Money 2011, Bank. Money in the Bank. We had Ooh, good match. Uh, Orange Cassidy and Kylie Ray from yeah, I believe one... it was Beyond Wrestling. Yeah, I don't know, understand that one, why everyone loves that one. I still don't. I mean, it was good for what it was. Yes. If, mm-hmm. if you mm-hmm. want to see the two of them wrestle and know if, if like what people see in them, I think though that's a good example. If you, oh. I think if you walk away from it and go, okay. I mean, I walked away with it more so getting it, I think, than, than becoming big fans. Although I thought Kylie was great. Uh, but the other one we watched was Isaiah Swerve Scott at the time Shane Strickland against Ricky Starks in a fantastic match. So it was uh, one of those dream matches. If we could have Starks and Isaiah Swerve Scott wrestle today, I would totally take it. Mm-hmm. But here we are back again. The crew is back together. Clump, say hello. Howdy, y'all. Thank you for letting me come back. I apologize for my absence. I'm glad to be back. It is wonderful to see you. I am upset that you didn't acknowledge the real masterpiece that was last week's art in advance of the show. Yeah, that's true. Clump yeah. stepped up and stepped in. I was on the road driving to California, and I could not make our flyer. Clump stepped up, graphic artist and genius extraordinaire, and made... You, you, you say it in jest, but the challenge you gave me was this. Yeah. Make it as bad as possible, as fast as possible. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Those are the requirements. Wow. He said, "Make it as yeah. shitty as possible. Make it as fast as possible." And I think with those parameters in mind, I did good. The best part is there was a rough draft I sent out, and he said, "Hey, the time's wrong." And my favorite, I think the the chef's kiss of it all, the the salt was, uh, I didn't correct the time. I was too lazy and didn't know how to edit that, so I just erased over six and just put an arrow down and put six thirty below. Yeah, it was so good. It was the the, the coupe de grace, I believe. Yes, the very the, good. The pan sauce to the the roast chicken. Definitely yeah. the au jus. Yeah. If I had mm-hmm. to venture a guess, and back as always, Miss Amanda Jane. Amanda, say what's up. Hello, everybody. We already got people showing up. It's a regular cheers in here. No. Gr Lunar coming Ooh. through saying training got canceled. I'm here. Woot. Oh, yeah. That's son of a, I've tried What's so many training times to get, for? I've been trying to get yeah, his training canceled slow. so many times to get him on the yeah. show, and every time he's like, nope, never canceled. Can't stop, won't stop. Now that it's canceled. Boom. Nice Boom. Uh, let's see. And also, actually, he's been storming so bad, and the ring he trains on is outside. I'm just going to say that. So there's a really good chance people did not want to get soggy. But... Just in time coming through. Cheers to the dive bar of the IWC. And cheers to you, the Don and the curator of our side of the IWC, Mr. Just in Time. I will say this for GR Lunar, training in the rain. Fantastic strategy. Art and Senna, the best Formula One driver in the world, in my opinion, was known for his driving in the wet. Though I know at no time a wrestling match that's been held in the rain other than Okada and uh, Minoru Suzuki probably not worthwhile but hell the 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 determination that's true 
if, yeah. if you know. Lunar trained in the rain and was at this year's WrestleMania, the Mania could have got started 20 minutes early. You know what I mean? Yeah. He could have been like, Maybe. fuck it, let it rain on me. I'm used to but this. You know, this is my wheelhouse. What was that, Amanda? You know what? Though, Lunar, I'm going to make you feel bad because like one of the greatest like oh training God. montages I've ever seen on Nintendo, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, I believe there's a scene when Little Joe is running in the rain. I'm Little just Joe saying. Little Joe does run in the rain. Little Joe does. I have to be healed sure. there. I'm just saying. What's going to happen is Lunar's going to leave the chat immediately and just go for a run for two hours and then come back and be like, how was that, you dicks? It's going to suck. We're going to lose Lunar. We're chasing him out. Uh, let's see. Jeremy Seaman's coming through. Best dive do- dev bar in the IWC is back for episode one. And Liam Moonlight coming through saying, oh, hi. Oh, hi. I think. It's oh, probably how are different. You? Oh, hi. Uh, uh-huh. Uh, and Lunar says with humidity. Hell yeah. Guys, it looks like I'm finishing another bottle today. Today Woo! I am having what's in my glass is slain Irish whiskey, a blended triple cast. It's really yeah. good stuff, man. This is I, I think of this as the scotch of Irish whiskeys. It's so robust in flavor and smooth and it's like tasting Irish. Scotland. But Irish. Oh, I oh I'm sorry. The complexities of scotch flavors is uh, pretty pretty isolated to scotches. Like you could blind test a, a series of types of whiskeys and you'd be able to pick out the scotch first, I think, because I think mm-hmm. of scotch as like almost the iced tea of liquor. There's just so mm-hmm. many flavors in, in them specifically. And Irish whiskey, I think, has a very defined flavor, much like a... Uh, German Pilsner has a very defined flavor. If you taste test those, you can go, oh, that was the Pilsner. Let me keep moving. But uh, this Irish whiskey, this triple cask, has all of that same, like that that full, vibrant flavor profile that a scotch has, but with an Irish like flavor palette. Really good. I can't put it over enough, I guess. But if you get the chance, slain triple cask is a good one. Uh, let me see. Leo Moonlight says it's a wave. The O is the head. And the salute. Yep. Those, oh, it's a wave. They were waving. Oh, aha. And wave. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Got it. Um, okay. Fair Don't train 65 degree climate controlled goodness. It's almost admirable how lazy I am. It's a good point. Yeah. Uh, what's in your glass, Clump? Uh, I have some coffee that is cold. Um, I also have a bottle of water. Uh, I had that gigantic cigar I sent you a picture of on my drive home. That was uh, a lot to smoke on an empty stomach. So I feel Oof. fantastic. Yeah, that's like a two-hour cigar, the one you sent me a picture of. When you said you were going to have it on the way home, I was like, is he going to finish it on the air? Because that's a, that's a big one. That's one that's going to burn for a good two hours. 20 minutes. <laughs> I have cancer okay. now. Yeah, you know, we just expedited the situation mm-hmm. at hand. Yeah. Are you not allowed to smoke inside? Yeah. No, I, I don't either. like my house smell like that, so. Yeah. No, it's fair. It's fair. I get it because I agree, but there are times I go, I'd really like to have a cigar on air. You know what I mean? But yeah. this, it doesn't take me too long to go, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Justin Times gifting out another sub to Jeremy. Cheers, Justin Time. <laughs> Lunar says barf. Amanda, what's in your glass? Guess what? It's the actual official return of the sponsored, not sponsored Sonic. They were out of Route 44, but I had an extra cup in the car because uh, the one was really flimsy. So, and it's, uh, of course, cherry. And I've got, hold on, I don't remember what I poured in here. Hold on. Oh, yeah. It's Myers Rum. Myers Rum. Myers Jamaican, right? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Yeah. Myers is a good one. Oh, and I have a Coke too. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Guys, at the end of the day, it's not about what you're drinking. It's about who you're drinking with. And these are our drinking buddies here in the dive bar. I'm going to get it out of the way. First thing and up front, Clump, you said you had coffee. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. We got fucking bugs in this house, dude. Uh-oh. It's a good oh. thing. I put a lid on my drink to keep it from going in and I think it worked. But now I don't know where the bug is. Why do you guys got gonna... bugs in your house? Yeah. Because, no, I don't think so. But I thought I crippled them, but I may have just startled them. Hmm. Um, 
We got little like fruit flies because of the Oof. pet sugar glider we have. He's been nah. slowly he's been slow on the take for the for the fruit and it's created a bit of an issue. Oh. So we're pulling back on the fruit and giving him a little bit more of the the protein and the dry foods. But I got a little offset there because of a uh, uh, a fruit fly getting or a gnat more or less getting real close to my whiskey. I'm never a fan of that. So oh, hell no. Mm -mm. No, no. But as I was saying, drinking buddies, Clump said you had some coffee. I don't imagine because there's no way you still have any left because it's so delicious. You likely had it all. But New Wave Coffee, still a sponsor, newwave.co, N-O-O-W-A-V-E.co. Promo code CHEERS for next year, 10% off any ongoing sales or 10% off their non-going sales. Clump, what were you I say cannot I cannot recommend them enough. Absolutely fantastic coffee. You are right. I am out of it, but they, that coffee is amazing. Please do take advantage. Buy that. It is worth every penny. It's really good. And the good news is, is you don't have to clump it up. You can get a subscription service from them. You can get a new bag every week, every other week, every month, or every other month. So that way you're never out of New Wave Coffee. Guys, this is Flow State Coffee, which is a specialty grade coffee with L theanine and rock cacao. For productivity and creativity, better energy, focus, and mood than a regular cup of coffee while decreasing negative side effects like anxiety and blood pressure. So check them out, newwave.co, N-O-O-W-A-V-E dot C-O, promo code cheers. So just want to make sure everyone knew about it, knows about it, new wave about it. Meh. I need to Meh. get some to drink ice only because today what I had really just, I shouldn't have had it. It was no good. Yeah, I'll tell you honestly with the with the cacao that's in there, having it just iced, just straight. I drink my coffee black anyways. I I love that uh that bit of a the bit of a chocolate in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Stackhouse coming through. Stackhouse <laughs> says got sponsors now. Let's fucking go. That's right, dude. New wave. Also, guys, I I don't know. I haven't seen. Stackhouse in there. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. He made his GCW debut and won. Yeah. Hell yes, dude. Congratulations. Uh -huh. GCW. Yeah. GCW. GCW. Um, I won't talk about the shirt he was wearing because it wasn't one of mine, but I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> but it was awesome, dude. It was so cool to see him not only do well, but then blow up on the internet. A bunch of people were tweeting him out. Even your boy, Amanda Janella, uh, basically said that he that he fucks with stackhouse that's his dude now so that's awesome yeah so i expect to see you at spring break was it four or five now i don't know all i know is i haven't got, been able to go to one damn it but are you gonna be able to go to this next one dallas yeah i don't know maybe yeah well hopefully stackhouse is there. Dallas, he's in texas though. we know he's not he's yeah in i did enjoy dallas i did yeah he's definitely in oklahoma how did he get to Texas? Is Texas and Oklahoma close? I don't know how that works. I don't yeah, the, on top. It's on top of or it? The, or the, you know, the top of Texas, it, it's like a, I don't know, straight line. And there's a little part, Oklahoma, it looks like a, um, like a, a pot. Yeah, like a pot. Or a frying pan, kind yeah, of, sort handle. of. Oklahoma's yeah, face handle. sitting on yeah. Texas. Yeah. Face sitting, that makes more sense. O Oklahoma straddling Texas, I get that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Riding. Yeah. That makes more sense. That makes a lot Gonna of sense. Going to give Texas pink eye. Yeah. Uh, Stackhouse does say he wore his drinking buddy shirt on IWTV last weekend. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> so good. So good. That's our guy right there, though. So, yeah. Hopefully we see a lot more Stackhouse in GCW. That was fantastic. We got Bam Dog coming through. Bam Dog 41 saying hello. Cheers, Bam Dog. What's in your drink, man? What's in your glass? But it is good to see Stackhouse back in the chat. So uh, I wanted to shout that out. His GC. Oh, producer lady. It's going to be a, one of those nights. Well, what happened? I'm warning you. <laughs> Why? Did you, did you get heavy handed with your slush? Oh, I sure did. Yeah. Oh, she's like, I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> I sure did. Today was a very long, laborious day. Yeah. We're, We're getting tanked. Good day to drink. We're getting, We're getting tanked. tanked. Uh, yeah. yeah. Clump's like, I'm all jacked up off cigar coffee let's go <laughs> um guys well a few things seem to have happened in the world of wrestling uh i'll be honest since, 
Since we have missed two weeks of the AEW NXT world, I don't think that it's going to be in anyone's best interest if we go through every single segment on every single show that we've missed. So I think what we're going to do today is go through more or less highlights and lowlights, mostly highlights. I don't like to really dwell too much on the on the bad, but I do feel like there's um, there was a, a bunch of good stuff going on overall over the last two weeks. Uh, as far as news, let's see. Oh, check out to say, yeah, I'll be on there more. I'm hoping a Vegas show next month, but not for sure. Not for sure yet. Oh yeah. That wonder, Vegas show. Stackhouse, I wonder if, um, I wonder if the promotion I kind of help out, out by me will bring you out. West coast oh. pro. West coast <laughs> pro find out because you know, Hey, he's GCW yeah. born now. I know. He's a, I know. Alum. Yeah. He's an <laughs> alum. Oh yeah. We've had GCW alum. AJ Gray, he's coming back again, and oh, very good. Nick fucking Gage, you know. Oh yeah, that'll be good. That'll I'm trying be to get good. Janella. Janella, I think is coming, but I can't. I'm not going to ruin the surprise. Yeah, but I know when. You heard it here first, Joy Janella. H. <laughs> You know, I've taken to retweeting stuff. I'm saying you've heard it here first because of how much of the quote wrestling journalism world is just reporting on Rough. a tweet uh-huh. so i'll retweet stuff now and say you heard it here first because that's the same as reporting as far as i can tell oh yeah um, mm-hmm. but stackhouse does say he'd be down to go out to the the pwc or whatever you called it so but let's talk west about coast news mm-hmm. west coast pro is what i yeah, yeah. The pcw said something else pcw is la <laughs> pcw ultra yeah i don't like that charge a hundred bucks you know, and like nowadays on the indies, it's like, who, who would I pay a hundred bucks to see a show for? Yeah. That's not PWG. Yeah. There's not much. Yeah. And Hammerstone was at West Coast Pro last, last show, wasn't he? But he's our champion. Oh yeah. There you go. Hammerstone's our champion. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. Uh, Kuro does say low lights only highlights hurt his eyes. I like that. <laughs> and Bime Talk says, it is funny my kids popped bigger for Gage showing up than they would have for Cena's return. Or is it funny? Um, hey. But okay, they, I mean, that's, I guess it's hard to say uh, to give even even by that sentence alone. Your kids didn't have the opportunity. So I guess you would assume, but you don't know. I will say uh, Kevlar's kids lost their fucking minds when Cena came out at Money in the Bank. They fucking lost it. So much so that he was messaging me about it, telling me how badly Aww. he wanted to be on the show but couldn't because his kids lost it. He said that only one of his three kids even watches every week with him. The other two don't watch him very much. One of them hasn't watched at all in, like, a year. And all three of them were just screaming and yelling, jumping up and down on the thing. So I do think it just depends, man. You know, um, I'll tell you, I was screaming and jumping too. Want to know why? Yeah, why? And I think, yeah, you heard it here first. Somebody's listening to me. I, yeah. I don't know who is it, Bruce Pritchard, whoever is listening to Bruce me. Bruce Pritchard, yeah, he listens. You to got it. You got to stop because when no, John he, Cena came out, he was wearing Echo Jorts again. He brought that shit back. Yeah. I'm like, what? I mean, I know John Cena does follow me, but you know, I he follows a lot of people, but. Yeah, I was like excited about that. I was like, yeah. "Holy shit, he's wearing shorts! He's bringing it back!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I screamed. I- I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, dude. <laughs> what else See? would he and come so I'm out using the bus today? What else would he come in? Uh, like- he wore khakis. He's worn military camouflage shorts. Yeah, he. It was always in shorts. Below yeah. the knee shorts was just kind of weird to me. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, like. Part of me wanted to come, him, see him come out modern, more like modern hip hop stuff, but no. he's 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 old he, school. Exactly. He yeah. So there real. was a moment I was watching where I was like, he's starting to look a little old to be dressed that way. Yeah. He could use a too. little bit of an update, mm-hmm. but I still liked it. I still lost my mind. I'm a fan. Let's see a couple things in here. Nick Gage for the children. Yeah. I mean, dude, oh, if you yeah. haven't heard the Nick Gage interview with Sam Roberts, go check it out. It was awesome. But let's see. Kuro says, Cena and George is the only thing that makes life perfect. 
Justin Time says, I legit had no voice the next day after Cena's return. But what can you expect from the guy who admits he's a Cena mark? Dude, it's just big stuff. It's big news. There's a lot yeah. happening. We're going to talk about all these returns right now because at the end of the day, I think that... I think this is a lot to do with the fact that we got full houses back. And I think that the last couple of months, remember I said that it felt like we got back into a holding pattern again. I was like, I feel mm -hmm. like it's going to really hit once the fans are back. And I feel like every mm -hmm. company is doing, pulling out all the stops that they possibly oh, yeah. can to try and make, make that difference. Uh, Stackhouse says Nick is freaking intense. Uh, I can't wait to see him and Cardona Saturday. I'm really curious about oh, that. Oh, that's right. Um, I really want to oh, see how that man. turns out. I don't want to jump the gun on it, but let's just talk about returns as, as it comes. Let's see. Kuro says, Cena is the only reason I started watching wrestling again after a really long hiatus. Yeah. Dude, he's got star power. He's an absolute mm -hmm. megastar. Yeah. He's a fucking movie star at this point, you know? Like, yeah. it's a big deal when he shows up. And we have not seen him yet put out a garbage match. Oh. Just like a shitty match. Like, the last couple of matches we saw him with in... We're great. And even that that flub that happened with Shinsuke, where Cena fell on his head, everyone went like, fucking Shinsuke. Like, nobody for a second thought that like Cena's timing. John. Right. There's no doubt in our minds that we haven't seen... Like, this isn't like The Undertaker's last ride, where the last, like, three or four matches, everyone's kind of like, I mean, it's really nice to see him, but it's starting to feel like it's time. Like, the last number of times we've seen Cena, it's been like, give him another championship, get him to 17, get him to 18. Like, the fever is there, and, yeah. like, he's okay, just man. that good. Yeah. Uh, Lunar does say, I ended up watching the main event at my dad's house, and I had to explain to my dad who Cena is. Your dad doesn't watch Fast and Furious? Uh, and she says, uh, not, that I, one's not on video it, yet. Yeah. And no, I haven't seen it yet, because I still kind of feel weird about going to the movies. Yeah, I feel weird about the movie. I mean, too. go ahead, Clump. It was he, he did more than Roman did in the last Fast movie where he was. Uh, that was hilarious. Roman was like an extra, okay. But they yeah. built that shit up, and it but, was hilarious. But you know what? It was like you know that. Okay, yeah, they did. You're in together. there. You're with the Rock, but it wasn't one of the Fast ones. It was a spinoff. It was Hobbs and Shaw. It, it was, was great. It was great. Yeah, but. It's a spinoff. It wasn't the, the series, you know, yeah. with the number. Definitely. Yeah, totally. I wonder if Roman could do something like that now. Maybe they didn't give him as many lines or give him as much of a role because no. did they, well, did they base it off of his, like, promo yes. work before? Yeah. Like, I don't know if he's there yet. Now, look at him. I think he'd do fantastic. I think he's, he's, he's put in work. He's showing more. No, it's just yeah, like 100%. he happened to be Samoan, and they needed Samoans. Plus, plus he has veneers now. <laughs> Samoans. So well, I have Hollywood no veneers. problem with Samoans. Okay, no, I'm not saying that. It's just you know. You heard it here first. Amanda it, Jane got a problem with Samoans. I do not. Yeah. I do not. There's Polynesian <laughs> blood in my body, and uh, no, no. I, but you know, how, how many Samoans do you know that are like? Because every button in that scene was Samoan. Mm -mm. Except there's one I was like. Most of them were of... actually from New Zealand. They were they were they Polynesian, were but they were like the they Maori. were like Maori or Tongan. Mm -hmm. I like that we just yeah, there was dovetailed one into dude this. That was Tongan, I could tell. And then Maori, that I didn't see much, but yeah. So Roman, I think, got it because he's Samoan. He's and from the family. And part of the only reason so. he got it, but you know, it definitely well, when I know, tell the rock you know. that his character has to go visit his family. He goes, wouldn't you know it, but I've got a Roman in my family. So mm -hmm. how fucking pissed were Jimmy and Jay? <laughs> Just Probably like, for not being if you're not going to have them say shit and you don't bring me in. Or yeah, me? What the fuck? yeah. Yeah, that would have been that would have been a good spot for all of them. Let's it see. Uh, back it to the chat. Stackhouse does say, "I hate when people shit on Cena. He's everything a pro wrestler is supposed to be. Good on the mic, good look. He's even evolved his move set the past few years. He's always yeah. had an evolving move set. Realistically, yeah. he's he, no, when you go back and watch all of his stuff. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's a fallacy. There, the five moves yeah. of Doom is a fallacy. It's just the only thing everyone you're has five moves of Doom. Yeah, Randy Orton, for sure. You know, has is notorious, and I think he's probably worse than 
Cena ever was. With it. Also, The Rock and Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels, they all had their five moves of doom that they did, and then and then yeah. other matches entailed more things. So it's just it just is what it is. Kira does say spinoff that killed the Fresh franchise for The Rock. I guess. Mm. I mean, I don't know. Uh, no. I, guess I don't. I haven't watched like almost any of them. I couldn't tell you how that went. No, I, I will say this as an avid watcher. No, but it's very weird. Like, how do you explain like him and Deckard Shaw are homies now? So you know, I don't know. That's the only thing that's weird. But I don't think it really did anything. He just needs to be in Fast Ten. All right. Yeah. Fast Ten, your seatbelts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just I like that. Ruined the name that they were going to give it. Yeah. Oh yeah. You heard fast it ten, fast harder. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's see. Kuro saying, "Where's the wrestling?" Good point. Uh, the Miz has five moves of doom. He's done with the fast franchise now. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know, man. Yeah. Never say never. Maybe. They say he can make a return. Oh, those are like the biggest grossing films in in you know around right now. Make billions and billions of dollars. He'll be back. Because The Rock is in it, that's why. So The Rock can go do anything now. He's yeah. going to be in Black Adam. He's a Marvel guy now. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. Speaking of returns, well, overall, are you guys excited about this prospect of Roman versus Cena? And even, I mean, I know we're going to be talking about the other stuff a little bit more, but Roman versus Cena, number two. And this time Cena says he's back because Roman is an asshole. Digging it. Digging it. I'm digging uh, it. I, I, I like it, and I think it'd be cool if they built it off of the few that they tried to do prior, which wasn't bad, but I think with Roman as a heel, it makes more sense now. Like, mm-hmm. go into that. Yeah, you're right. Like, I would love Roman to come out and say, I wasn't there then, yeah. and just mm-hmm. build off of it. It'd be great. Yeah, Roman right. is a fantastic heel, and with Cena coming back, it makes way more sense to me now because they kept pushing roman as this face in this next version of cena well this is a way where roman could possibly even go over cena it would look good it would make sense and you know you could still have a baby face heel yeah i do wonder though i do want to talk about this because i've heard a lot of people say oh how great is the scene is here to put over roman (laughs) what roman's over roman's over but but the idea of everyone being like this is going to be the 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 real passing of the torch because the last one was supposed to be, supposed to be and it didn't work as planned. I've heard a lot of people just saying that, but I've thought to myself because a lot of people have been like, I don't think it would do any good if Cena won. Except when I think about the Rock versus Cena, number one once in a lifetime, where Rock won, that led into arguably the biggest match of the decade at the time, Rock Cena two. Twice in a lifetime, as it were. Yeah. So I think about it and I go, maybe Roman does win. Or maybe Cena does win. And then maybe Roman has to get back at Cena. You know, maybe we have a, a almost a redo. I think really it's more about um, coming back and um, SummerSlam. And it's like you really need to fill butts in that. Because it's at the stadium, right? Allegiant Stadium. Yes. Home of the Oakland Raiders. Sorry, I will never let that go. Um, you know, so they need someone to fill the seats. I mean, who, who, who better than Cena? Yeah, Cena fill seats. Clump, what do you think about the idea of Cena, uh, Cena winning one and, and then Roman on the chase trying to reestablish <laughs> and getting the second one? Because they need to have a rubber like match because Cena lost last time. So if he won mm-hmm. this time and said, I fucking done told you, boy. And then and then you have a, a, a rubber, like a proper rubber match. Mm-hmm. Or do you have Roman win this one and Cena win it at WrestleMania? Oh, True. yeah. I mean, you can even you can even rush it and do it two in a year instead of doing yeah. two years to a year apart. You can do that. But how long is uh, Cena going to be back for? Has I don't know. They're sad? calling it the summer of Cena. You can't go in the summer Cena, then do a fall of spring Cena, and then a spring of Cena and a winter Cena. If you're going to do summer of Cena. Well, he you know can I mean? have different shorts that make his butt look good. And also, Sting already did winter. So you got Sting doing winter, you got Cena uh, doing summer. Okay. Speaking of the winter and Sting, yeah. totally off the topic, but we'll get there. 
I noticed they didn't have snow for him. Yeah, they didn't. You know who did have snow this week? Frankie Monet. Yeah. Fucking weird. It was way weird. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Legit heat, like cocaine or snow? No, it was on, on her uh, Titantron thing. They had like a yeah. bunch of snow coming down. She was standing there and I was all like, huh. Or wait, no, that's like diamonds. It might have been diamonds oh. or glitter, but it looked a lot like snow. Um, it could have been like cocaine. Snow. We don't know. cocaine. Hollywood's full of cocaine. Well, Hollywood's got oh, cocaine. Yeah. In fact, right now they're trying to like uh, market. And this is, I, I was listening to the story on the news and I was like, this is fantastic. They're trying to like market ethically sourced cocaine. Conflict free cocaine. Yeah. Yes. Oh. I, I like the idea of that. And I think it's a business venture you and I should talk about off air. Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Fast 10, 30 minutes or less, Kuro says. Lunar says, Fast 10 with Cena and Rock. I believe it. Uh, they say, let's go. Rock, Cena, three. Kuro saying, Stackhouse says, I think Big E's going to be the one that beats Roman. Yeah. No, no, I think Big E's going to be the one that takes it off Lashley. Big That's e got a way better Lashley. story. That's, well, it, it's well gotta... fuck it. Dude, you're right, because cause Lashley's been fucking with New Day. Yeah, yeah he, he fucked up Kofi. Yeah, after like he I was fucked up I, Woods. Yeah, and I wanna like I wanna apologize to, to, to Brock Lesnar for being upset about that match. You know, I was yeah. like, you know, at least it was like thirty seconds. He like I was sitting there's like Kofi's gonna get a bit offense in at some point, right? Cut to five minutes later. Come on, Kofi, do something. Oh, okay. Well yeah. shit. <laughs> Dude, a hundred percent. And I've heard someone else say, I forget where, uh, but they were talking about Brock Lesnar is like a no fluff kind of wrestler. That, uh, and it was somebody talking about wrestling him in some interview somewhere. Where they were talking about how he was very much all like, no reason to overcomplicate this. We're gonna do this move and this move, and you know, basically, you know, shrink it down and take the time. You know what I mean? Like, hey, we're gonna do this many moves over this amount of time, and that's it. The idea that Brock's all like, look. I mean, potentially, who knows? I'm, I'm fucking speculating, right? But the idea that Brock might possibly be all like, hey, look, we don't need to have a 12-minute match where I dominate you. How about I just uh, clean you up real fast and we make a deal out of it, make a thing out of it. People talk about it for a long time. You know, Kofi goes, okay, let's do it. Then you have this one where Bobby Lashley's all like, let's do 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 minutes. I think we do 20 minutes. And Kofi's all like, uh, what am I going to do? And he goes, you'll keep falling. Yeah, just, just buckle up pretty much. Get ready. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the crash test dummies, but here you go. And I'm not saying that these people actually pitch these things. I'm being facetious. But the idea that, like, yeah, they were essentially the same match, Brock and Bobby against Kofi. Except one showed mercy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that was the thing I thought. I was like, it's kind of, no, no. Like, yeah. you, you say, no need to overcomplicate things. I think it's like, I don't really need to bury him. Like, like I I don't I still don't want to think WWE openly is like yeah we're gonna bury someone but if you were gonna make an argument about burying someone is a ten second match on the premiere of your network television show burying or is five minutes of getting your ass handed to you for like to an incredible extent on a B pay per view burying. Money in the mm. Bank's one of their top pay per views. It's considered the fifth, but it is now. I hear but you. you. Get what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah, I hear you for sure. And then the, I mean, then the same thing happened to Keith Lee. He made his big return too. He came back and he got his fucking ass handed to him. Oh. Just. And what was crazy about that is when Keith Lee and Bobby Lashley are standing nose to nose, which realistically was more like chin to nose. I was like, oh my yeah. god, Keith Lee is huge. I was like, Keith Lee makes Bobby Lashley look like a small person. He makes him look like a normal human being. And if there's anything we know about Bobby Lashley, is he does not look like a normal human being around anyone. Nope. Keith Lee made Brock Lesnar look just like a normal person. Keith Lee's fucking huge. And then Bobby's like, how about how about we do 10 minutes of me just beating the shit out of you? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you see him Sounds good. with Dijak, okay, because that happened at Bola two, a couple bowls ago. And yeah, like 15 week. matches in NXT. Mm-hmm. It was, a, it, you know, it's like walls. But that was, I think, the first time. Yeah. That they went at. 
But I do agree with you. I think Big E takes it off Bobby Lashley because he's been fucking with everybody and he was fucking with his boys. And I think it makes a lot of sense for Big boys. E to come out here. Can you imagine too if Big E does the does the old yeah, but does the old like Cena cash in where it's all like I'm gonna cash in on you at the pay per view. Let's make this a match, like and not a surprise, and just says I I want you to know that I am beating the shit out of you. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. And then you get a real serious Big E saying like I've been watching from afar and I'm tired of it, and I'm here to mm-hmm. ruin your day. You know, like that could be fucking dope. Kiro says, uh, Big E's going to go after Lashley. Yeah, see? Uh, Lunar says, Cena and Goldberg go over. 100%. I actually think the biggest problem I have with Goldberg showing up is that he's in a program because he's made his return, too. This is going to be just a show about returns, I'm telling you. Goldberg's return, too. And he went nose-to-nose with with Bobby Lashley. Yeah. Hmm. Why is Goldberg not back to just beat the shit out of Drew? I would have loved it if Goldberg came back and got like a – a 30 second victory over Drew McIntyre gets his win back, then goes on to Lashley. That would have been so good for me. I would have loved that. What do you think about Goldberg's being back? Clump. I didn't. Even, when did Goldberg come back? Yeah, you know, I'm on Raw. Right after Keith Lee got his ass really? fucking crushed, yeah. Bobby Lashley's just standing in there, ear bleeding, and Goldberg just comes out and goes, What next? <laughs> oh, fuck. And then, uh, that's and then Lashley, double. yeah, and then Lashley's all like, fuck you, old man. And then he's like, whoa, 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 there's money to be made. Don't touch him. Like MVP playing the role of a good business manager being like, wait till it's in the ring. Wait till it's in the ring and pulling him back and made it look legit. Like I loved the intensity that Bobby was showing MVP, like being like, don't fucking do this. We can make money with this. Like I loved it. It felt like old school yeah. fight stuff. Yeah. But like, again, that's why day, MVP is great. <laughs> <laughs> That's why MVP is great. He turned that that otherwise kind of weird segment into like, oh, this feels like a fuck a fight now. Clump, mm-hmm. what are you gonna say? <laughs> That's I'm not happy with that actually. Like as I think about that, um, so like, and I'm I, I know this isn't it. I'm not trying to be that smart mark asshole, but like I'm I look at it and I'm like, so we got rid of Strowman for this because. If what you've shown in the past years, you've shown you can build people up because Bobby now is a proper, defined, you know, fantastic heel. He's got a mouthpiece and he himself, like he comes out and he he he's good at little bursts of saying mm-hmm. like, yeah, this. And he's showing what he did in Impact. Like, okay, yeah, there's a reason. And his entrance career. looks like yeah. it's a fucking movie every time. Yeah. It's all like, I want to see this movie. The all Exactly. Night. But going, why bring Goldberg back? Because the other thing is we've brought Goldberg back several times and his record's kind of dog shit now. He's not done well like, lately. No. <laughs> so, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to bring you back in. You're going to lose to Bobby? That's not scary. If you're going to do this, you got to build Goldberg up. But then, again, I ask, why not do this? Let's bring Ooh. Goldberg in as a mouthpiece because he's not bad as a promo. And have him endorse someone. No, no, no. I think you're right. Big E. No, well, first off, I think I think that Goldberg does need a win before he gets to Lashley, and I think he takes the win over Drew. He's got to beat the shit out of Drew. We need that win back. Because Drew is a heel, and he needs to get his ass kicked. And they've given up on Drew. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Drew's back to the mid card. One segment of show. Things have been Oh, buddy. But... Yeah, but there is uh, this going in here, too, uh, because we're going to continue this conversation on it. Uh, Stackhouse says Lashley is probably going to lose to Goldberg. I have heard said that said just because Big E has said multiple times his dream match is a match against Goldberg. That growing up, Goldberg was his absolute favorite because he was a big kid and he was, you know, an intense football player and all that stuff. So. He identified with Goldberg in a certain way, and so he says that would be his dream match, his his absolute dream match. And he goes, and it wouldn't be a long match because he talks about it on his podcast. He goes, it'd be two minutes, just big men slapping meat. And he goes, and I'll lose. I will take no, the no. loss. <laughs> you didn't even say it right. Big meaty men slapping meat. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Like that's what I was thinking. He's like, yeah, like have him endorse E, or if we want to extend out this feud with E. 
and Lashley. <laughs> Let's have Goldberg lose to Lashley. And then E come out and like, mm. <laughs> although, I mean, would it be like you fucked with all my all my guys and now I'm pissed at you after you fucked with my hero? <laughs> yeah, see, I could see that, too. I thought that there's possibility that, you know, uh, Goldberg could win. Big E could cash in on Goldberg. They could have a minute or two back and forth just for the fun of it. And then Big E could win it. And then when Bobby's like, no, nah, fuck this. I'm getting my title back. Big E can be like, you know what? I don't like the idea of that. Because I've been seeing the way you fuck with my friends. And make it mm-hmm. a, a bigger story between Big E and, and Lashley. Where Big E's ducking Lashley because he's a dick. And then when he says, yeah, I'll do it. But under my stipulations. And then you just get a fucking brawl. Like, mm-hmm. that could be cool. Yeah. 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 Kiro does say... Oh, wait. Producer, something you want to say? Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I think what I really like about MVP is that, to me, he makes the match make sense. Like, he he always has really good points where whatever he says, I end up being like, oh, yeah, he's, he's got a really good point there. Like, I don't know. I just I like how he, he sets up storylines. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. MVP does great by it. Uh, and if you haven't yeah. figured it out by now, we're definitely not going to be breaking down each show at all. We're going to be just talking. I mean, I think it's going to be a big show about returns and then a couple of highlights. But There are lots of returns and weird things. Yeah, lots of returns, and we're going to hit them all, man. Uh, Kuro does say Goldberg is going to take Lashy down, cut Big E theme. Uh, triple threat. Goldberg just leaves the ring because he just wanted to teach Lassie a lesson. Big E takes the pin and wins the title. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Stackhouse does say, I remember we talked about that when it happened, that it was better they beat Kofi in a few seconds rather than just beat Kofi for 10 minutes. And we were right because that was hard to watch with Lashley. I do remember talking about that here. I think it was episode one if you go back. I believe it was episode one. Uh, we mentioned it. Like, well, at least it was a quick match. He got a quick one. He just got the better of Kofi who went for a big risk real fast and it fucking flew in his face immediately because it's Brock fucking Lesnar. And we said maybe that was a lot better than just watching Lesnar just beat the shit out of him for a while. And and I think we were all correct. Uh, Kiro does say my track record for being right is 75%. He's saying his track record, my, not mine. My track record is, is impeccable. Uh, and Stackhouse does say maybe Goldberg takes it and carries it to the Mania and drops to Big E. Maybe we could do a bunch of cool things. I actually don't think the idea of Goldberg being back and being somewhere in this title picture story with Lashley, knowing that Big E's walking around with the money in the bank, I don't think that's terrible. I, It's not how I perceived SummerSlam to go. It wasn't my dream match set up. But seeing it just on paper goes, there's a lot of directions we can go with this that all kind of work out fun. Even you just said, Clump, how much you really don't like the idea of it, but we just plotted out like four different storylines in this that wouldn't be bad. Yeah, we did. However, and rather I, not. I don't. <laughs> I, I, a lot of the times we plot out storylines and we're like, why the f- that That's great. And then they go like a way that, that, yeah, like, oh, well, that's another way you could have gone. I don't really know why, but okay. No, no, it's true. I still want my, I still want my Kevin Owens Triple H thing. Oh my God, I still think that that could still happen. I want it so bad. I've been booking that one forever. I would love to see Bronson Reed and Kevin Owens. Sure, we could do that. Yeah, yeah talk about meat slapping. <laughs> yep. Amanda, how much? Wait, how much yeah. has she had? She poured Jay? heavy. She is poured. Very um. Heavy, well, technically, she, this well, there my Sonic was out of. 44 cups. Okay. I had one. So. I had a spare one in the car because the other day, like, I punched my finger through the damn, you know, thing. My nails were hurt. I don't know. So, so did you hand the cup back to them and say, hey, don't worry about it. I have one? No, 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 no. Okay. I, they poured it in another one. And then what I did was I poured the Myers in and then I poured the the slush in. Yeah. And I put a little bit more wires in. Yeah, there was space. Yeah, maybe about space. four shots, maybe, yeah. maybe five. Yeah, it wasn't. That was. You didn't really have a choice there. You had to fill up the cup. Yeah. Well, I didn't know. Actually, I did not fill up the whole cup. Right. Just so you know, there's probably about like maybe five shots of four and a half. I don't know. I don't have any yes. Definitely. Stackhouse mm-hmm. is in the chat and says, our Sonic has been out of straws for a month. That would kill Amanda. Really? 
That would, oh no, no, because I would get my own straw because I would go find whatever. I'll go to the straws? boba place that's like down the street and they have long straws along with the big, thick ones, but I'd go get the long straws and it'd be fine. Speaking yeah, of big, but, thick ones, Eric's still but here. today, going... Stackhouse, you're going to appreciate this. My Sonic today, on every, like, car hop thing and then on the drive through it says we do not have Powerade, we don't have ginger ale, we don't have uh, hot dog pretzel buns, we don't have uh, diet cherry flavor for the... Why the fuck are you open? Dude, no joke, like, Clump. I went to a Pollo Loco like, once who told me they had no chicken. And they said, would you like to order anything else? I said, it's your name. Like, what else do you have? Yeah. And the guy kind of looked at me and shrugged. He goes, we got, like, side beans. Yeah, I was like, beans I will rice pass. is it. Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck. And here's the tortilla. I found one for you. Here you go. Yeah. Uh, Justin Time says, are we sure Amanda didn't pregame? And just, and just no, I did not mention it. No, because I'm just working at my property now in, you know, we're under construction, so there is no, yeah, no, there was no pre. This was just straight. I got home. I'm like, oh my gosh, and I don't know. I got carried away. Nice. Yelp review. Oh, yeah. Employee was fantastic and very cordial. Talked about wrestling. Seemed slightly pre-gamed. Yeah. Uh, Kira would I say left field. Biggie wins the title. Woods and Kofi get mad that Biggie went off on his own to win a title. Woods or Kofi versus Big E for the title. I don't like anything like that at all. No. I think that's terrible, if I'm being that's honest. Uh, Carol does say, my chat is posting all my messages twice. Well, it's not on my side, so you're good. No echo here. Uh, and Carol does say, McDonald's is out of burgers. Yeah, dude, 100%. When I even looked at the menu, the guy said no chicken. I was like, do you guys even have steak? And they're like, no. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck do you want me to do? Like, why are you why open? You, you have no steak at El yeah. Pollo Loco. No, because like uh, tacos and stuff and taco bowls, you can get steak, carne, you know. Well, that's um, Chipotle. Remember when Chipotle literally had literally no every beef? Mexican place. Everybody Just relax. Stackhouse hey, does hey, say hey. they were out of chicken too for a bit. Sonic is slipping. Dude, Sonic's going out of business, what it sounds like. All over the country, they don't no, have anything in don't stock. Don't say that. Don't say that. No, it's just... <laughs> no, no, don't say that. My heart, you just, my heart, like... Oh. No. You just need an EGs, that's all. Don't, don't do that, because they, they opened one in Casa Grande, and it's dog shit. Yeah, but the slushies are probably still so good. Oh, it's the oh, desserts. I mean, place. honestly, let's be real. It's about the desserts and the slush. Yeah. That's all I gotta say. I'm still upset that they got rid of my favorite one. Which you was... guys are just describing situations like if I went to a dispensary and they're like, hey, we're out of weed. And I just pause <laughs> and be like, oh. close it up, man. What do close you up have? <laughs> yeah. Close up shop. What are you selling? Souvenirs? I'm not here for a keychain. Shut it down. Uh, yeah. Just time to say four words. New day, triple threat, dude. I don't. Who? Why do you? Uh, why want who, did fight? Yeah, well, I have no desire to see any of them in a match against each other. None, zero. I think it's so and then, much and I'd so important for their Will characters Ospreay to stay match. together. Yeah, and then That's with with feel. with that logic, fucking Woods would win. And I love Woods. Woods is the best. He's one of the most entertaining people. He, I fucking don't give a shit about him in the goddamn ring. If he would have put a singles belt on him, I'm done. Why am I yelling? It's all right. I, I love him. I watched him do a D and D thing for G4. It was amazing with Ember Moon and everyone, and I loved it. I don't want him to hold a serious major belt at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stackhouse does say he wouldn't be mad at Big E versus Kofi. For a pay-per-view, if neither one had a turn, had to turn. Like, if it was a tournament thing, I could see that. Like, if there was a King of the Ring tournament and they happen to end up on the same side of the bracket and end up in a match and be like, well, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, I could see that. But at the same time, if it's Woods, I would see, uh, like, an Usos-style moment where whoever it was, Kofi or Big E, would be like, this has been your dream for so long. I'm not even going to try and take this from you. I'm, I'm going to forfeit. You know what I mean? And that could be a cool moment, too. I think there's nothing about New Day and the power of positivity that needs to be sullied by some sort of a turn here. Yeah. He's Just time to say... Yeah. Uh, he says, if the Shield can have a triple threat, then so can New Day. The three of them against each other would be insane. I'm, I'm just, I don't want it. I don't want it. Don't. Mm -hmm. Clump, back back your keyboard away from push it, Push it forward a little bit. Um, I got the... louder switches deliberately. I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep having to turn you down. That's all right. Sorry. 
If you, he, you turn him down and he turns up. That's yeah. Clump's way. Literally, Turn. I like searched what are the loudest clicky switches I can find. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, any other debuts or returns in WWE before we get over to AEW and NXT? Uh, oh, the news stuff. That's right. So the all the news came out. So reportedly, rumorly, nothing confirmed by anyone involved whatsoever. But according to a singular dirt sheet that every other dirt sheet then regurgitated the information of. And said that they're quote, reputable because they want to ensure that they sound fantastic. Yep. Yeah. But they did say that it is a done deal, 100%, no fucking chance of mistake here, that Daniel Bryan and CM Punk have both signed with AEW, absolute for sure, no doubt about it. The only thing I want out of this is for them to certainly not show up on AEW just so the dirt sheet can look like an idiot. I have no problem yeah. with them going to AEW. I just don't want them to now. But yeah. <laughs> just from the pettiness, Stackhouse does say, has there been any updates on the Brian and Punk signings? As far as I saw moments ago, there was none. Although CM Punk did post on his... Uh, Instagram story, I believe. I'd have to go double check to see if it wasn't an older one because he posted once before because he's done it before because he's a troll. That it was just a black background with the uh, Last Dance Chicago Bulls music, which oh, yeah. he's from Chicago, so of course he would know that. But the Last Dance was all about Michael Jordan's last run being well known to be his last run. Him saying, "This will be my last run." That they they termed it the Last Dance before the documentary. Even they turned yeah. it the last dance during the time. This is it. Yeah, they turned it the last dance before that season because yes, uh, for a lot of factors. Yeah. So he posted a, a a thing that was playing that entrance music for for the Bulls, which I think is pretty fucking funny and cool either way. But none of the people involved, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, AEW, or anyone else, has said yes. This is this is the truth of the matter. They've all kept yep. quiet on it. Yeah. So it is what it is, and it may very well be. Let's start with Amanda, and then we'll go to Clump. What do you think about the idea of Daniel Bryan and CM Punk turning up in AEW? Well, first of all, um, if you're not going to give me fucking Punk and Cabana in a fight, kind of death matchy kind of thing because that's personal, and I'd love to see it, then I don't want it. But that's just me. But I, anything else? I, oh, go ahead, but, Clump. Let's go to Clump. Yeah. No, 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 Amanda, finish up, finish up. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'm talking about that. But, you know, it's kind of cool. A lot of people are like, you know, whatever. Daniel Bryan, I think, would be great. Only because of the fact that he can now probably wrestle in other things like New Japan or, you know, do kind of what he wants more part-time than having that schedule that the E has. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I was going to say is... I I have questions about that. Like everyone is so excited about the idea of CM Punk being in AEW. Uh, as Colt Cabana signed there, yeah, I have no idea how or why you do that because I don't feel like that's going to happen. I feel yeah. like there's a lot there, and I don't think that's healthy or good. I would actually be like, that's a shitty idea. Like along, I would become that dirt cheek guy who's like. Well, this is really bad, and the talent backstage wouldn't be happy. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. I'm sure Marquee fans would like it, but also, to me, and yeah, CM Punk had fantastic feuds in Ring of Honor, but what made him him was WWE, and we, yeah. you know, keep forgetting that. So I think if you wanted him to go somewhere, he could do things in some places, but I'd want to see him in WWE. Um, for Daniel Bryan, I... The only way I'd see him in AEW personally is I feel like he'd sign New Japan and would be a, going over like Finn Juice are or, you know, like these other performers are like Jay White appeared in Impact. I feel like Daniel Bryan's passion is in Japan. And I feel like that makes more sense to me. And that would be what I'd want to see. I think those would be fantastic matches, you know? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Here's my I think major he's too serious one performer. You think Daniel Bryan's too serious a performer? I think, I think yes. He's done silly. We, we think of the silly matches with him and Kenny Omega in Ring of Honor or in uh, PWG. He's too serious of a performer mm -hmm. to be in AEW. AEW. Are you talking about Daniel Bryan? Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't had a match with Kenny Omega, has he? Yes, he yeah. has. 
uh, Ring of Honor when mm-hmm. Kenny was in Ring of Honor. Before they had a Kenny. literal thumb wrestling and arm wrestling match in a match. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's weird. He's silly. Don't get me wrong, but what makes Daniel Bryan Daniel Bryan to me is him submissions. Yes, mm-hmm. him in AEW would be like it'd be rough because it's built itself as something that's very silly. There's nothing wrong with that. I do appreciate it, but they're not there yet. I think he'd be a great featured act, but I think he would be absolutely fantastic in new Japan, him Mm -hmm. versus Okada, him versus Tanahashi, him versus Suzuki. All fantastic. Zack Sabre Jr. Two submission guys. Him versus Jay White. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It would be awesome. I don't see him being utilized in a great way in AEW if he's only in AEW. I see him doing great, like him versus Kenny Omega in AEW, cool for some belt. Him versus Moxley would be interesting to see happen there. I don't think I, I don't give a shit about him versus Matt Seidel. I don't give a shit about him versus Orange Cassidy. I don't give a shit about him uh, versus Darby Allen at all. But I think him in New Japan would be so much better. My concern is if he if we see so so first off, actually let me let me throw it this way. The idea of them being over there I do think would create a lot of buzz and I think people would be very interested and I think we'd see um, we'd see people interested and in talking about it. I don't know that I would think that the two of them going over there would be a, like some sort of seismic shift just because I don't think that the issues that people who have issues with AEW, I don't think that the issues they have are with the talent necessarily. I think the people who have issues with AEW have it not because they're missing CM Punk and Dan O'Brien. But that said, real quick, Amanda, if not Colt Cabana, is there any match you can think about putting Punk in that you would be even interested in? If the AEW people? Yes. No. Me neither. Here's the deal. My concern with CM Punk going over there is his whole gimmick online. The whole gimmick of CM Punk, like like Clump was just saying, was revolved around WWE. It revolved around WWE doesn't doesn't respect me or doesn't want me. I uh, he was the anti WWE character within WWE. That's what made him so fascinating and so good That's in true. that role to be yeah. within the company and talk shit on the company. It always felt like the pipe bomb is so fucking scripted. But it felt like it was real because why would the company let someone say that about itself? But they do, and it happens. And that's what made his comp- the character so compelling was he was anti-WWE within WWE. Mm-hmm. If he goes to AEW, he's just going to be anti-WWE in AEW, and he's going to basically look like everybody else because <laughs> everyone yeah. else is doing the same shit. They're all trying to pull a CM Punk gimmick. So, yeah, he'll come out and do it better than everyone else. Yeah. But I can't think of a match I'm interested in seeing him in. I'd Maybe. probably really like to see him against Hager and watch Hager beat him. I think would be good. Yeah. <laughs> the MMA but, fight with Hager. Yeah, in in a little yeah. cage. Yeah. Well, um, also, um, Malachi Black, I think, might be interesting. Just because oh, that could be cool. That could that, be cool. That could be kind of cool, you know. But but to be honest, I no, you know, no, there isn't. There really isn't anybody. And the thing is, is I don't see these two dudes superseding the elite. In that mm-hmm. I don't have any desire to see CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, show up in AEW to take losses to Kenny Omega so the Kenny Omega legend and lore can, can grow. I have zero interest in that. And I think that's what we're doing here is, well, I mean, because it's what they've done with every other big name they've signed. They've had him come in, and if they either they either get in, a, in the elite's way and the elite take him out, or they don't have anything to do with the elite, and then how important do they look? How important yeah. is Christian Cage right now? How important is Matt Hardy? How important is Miro? They're all avoiding the elite because they have to lose to the elite because the elite's the cap. And it's a, a, and I don't think with this brilliant, quote, brilliant mind and long-term booking of Tony, I don't think anything is shifting the thought process they have. And I think we're absolutely going to Kenny and Page regardless of anything. So maybe we end up with Punk and Daniel Bryan against Page, but solidifying Page is the guy. I don't see them going there and making, getting a bunch of good wins. You know what I mean? And I don't want to see them there just to, just to push this narrative of these are the best of all time. Like that was the whole thing with, with the young bucks. They brought in FTR so they could 
pay them to lose so they can say they're better and stop that conversation that everyone was but saying FTR's for so long. Good, That's yeah, and the conversation was always that FTR was better than the Young Bucks. So what they do? They bought them out and made them job. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, um, the other scenario that I keep thinking in my head in regards to like Kenny Omega and Hangman and the Elite and all of that, you know, the, the elephant in the room, I really feel somehow Marty Skrull is going to be involved somewhere with it. And that's going to mark his return. Sure. Don't know where, don't know how people are going to have a problem with it. And I'm just like, Shh, no, no. Then, you know, we need to get rid of people like TJP who are known perverts and, you know, All right. move it along. Um, in the chat, we do have, uh, let's see. The only thing I've seen, Justin time says, the only thing I've seen is punk is signed to supposedly a done deal. Uh, I saw that with the, um, with the Daniel Bryan one too. They said reportedly a hundred percent, but cannot confirm, which is funny. Good verbiage. hundred percent, uh, but I can't confirm. What, what the, yep. That's like an oxymoron. Okay. Come on. Oh yeah. That's wrestling. Journalism. Uh, Kuro does say that's funny that people assume Brian's going to AEW because later or last, last that was heard is Brian wanted to help NJPW American Division. Yeah, but he also said recently, like in an interview right before he left, that he really wanted to wrestle Kenny Omega, which is why I was surprised you said they've wrestled before, because the way he said it sounded like he'd never wrestled him before, but maybe he's only well, wrestled him the once and liked it. So It's a we'll different see. Kenny Omega than he it is. wrestled before. It's a totally different one. Now, if you hear the beginning of Final Countdown, that, that da -da 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 -da, you, you know Tony spent some money, and he brought Brian Danielson back. Oh, that's cool. I have a feeling that's uh, going to happen. I, I Probably. Yeah. yeah. Just in time to say, Brian mentioned a shit ton of dream matches with AEW and NJPW talent he wanted to have, and that's the only reason why I'd see him signing with AEW. Yeah, see, just like that. Uh, Stackhouse does say, if they do sign them, it'll be great for ratings. Yeah, and I agree. And he goes, Brian versus Page would be fire, though, and I agree with that, too. I'm just not interested to see Daniel Bryan the jobber for AEW to prove that AEW is better. You know what I mean? And I really feel like that's where we're at with it. Yeah. Like... Even Brody was jobbing out to Cody. He was out there having like some bad matches and losing a lot. And then he won the TNT title. But they also forget like he lost it to Cody as well. You know what I mean? Like it's not. I don't know. I, I feel like that they bring in these people with credibility so they can have a win over them. So they can then therefore say they have credibility. Look at we beat. We beat FTR, therefore we're better wrestlers. It's like no, that's not. No one buys into that concept. I don't think. Maybe people do, but we're gonna get Cody and Punk. I bet. Cody and Punk probably. Cody Daniel Bryan. Cody's got to yeah. face everyone on the way in, and they'll have to to job to him. I just don't. I just don't want to see these guys go in and just not be winning. There's no reason for that, and I don't need to see them win against Matt Seidel. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't need them in so many matches that they're having to go on dark. I don't need to see them on elevation. You know what I mean? Like. Hmm. It's just ridiculous to me. So I, I just don't know. Uh, Jeremy does say, Punk's mystique for me is non-existent at this point. Well, yep. After all these years of saying never say never, but never showed the interest, and now all of a sudden he's interested, that just means they, they offered him the right amount of money. Make no mistake about it. I have not seen or heard anything of CM Punk since he left that made me think he cared any bit about the business whatsoever outside of money. He is the actual character that people believe Brock Lesnar to be. CM Punk 100% walked away because he just wasn't going to make enough money and he yeah. thought he was better than the business and never watched yeah. wrestling again. And now mm -hmm. that people are knocking and offering a bunch of money, he goes, oh, maybe I can come back. We're Brock Lesnar. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm not, not, you know what I mean? I'm going to run through some of this chat and I'll go back to you. Uh, but then it says, Justin Time does say, as for Punk, I'm fine if he never returns. I feel the same. Uh, he shit on pro wrestling enough to show fans that he doesn't really care about it. See? Uh, the mm -hmm. only reason he'd come back is for the money. See? I didn't yeah. read that yet. Uh, Kuro does say, uh, but here's the thing. BFG is AAA, NJPW, AEW, and obviously Impact. I don't know what BFG is. So uh, do you know what that is? Amanda? Mm -mm. No. Uh, no. Stackhouse what, says, what I'd rather that? see. I have no idea. Big fucking uh, gun? I guess. You need to put uh, GCW in that mix too now. But you don't know because, what BFG is. How do you want? Well, you're mentioning all these promotions, but I'm well, not. Usually, he's reading. He's trying to read. 
I know, but I'm just saying. We got to Oh, add Bound for w. Glory. Oh. Like I watch okay. Impact. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, Mickey James made her return. Let's see. Stackhouse says, I'd rather see Punk as a commentator or something. I have no interest in seeing him wrestle again. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm telling you. Uh, Kiro you says, why are all these things sending twice? It's, they're not. Only on your side. But, uh, yeah, as far as them going there, I feel like that's, like, it's big news. But it's also... I don't know that I'm looking forward to it just because of everything that's happened with all the other big news they got there. What happened when Big Show got there? I haven't seen or heard from him since he showed up and said, I'm going to come make waves. Mark Henry came out, cut part of a promo before Vicky Guerrero said, get the fuck out. And he said, sorry, and hasn't come back. You know what I mean? Like, they, they're making these big moves and we don't see any of it. They signed Thunder yes, Rosa today. Yeah, got excited, finally. But yeah. we see... We see Big Show over on the internet wrestling, and he's doing a fantastic fucking job on sure, commentary maybe. with Shivani. Yeah, maybe. fantastic. That's where I can stand Shivani doing commentary is with with Holy. Yeah, but I'm saying even Sting, what has he done that's been so great? He's really just palling around with Darby Allen at this point. I mean, what have I missed that he's done that's so great? I haven't seen him do oh, anything him but do. Cassidy had a banger. That was awful. I know. I hated that. That was yeah. I know it was horrible. I thought it was so stupid. Yeah. Did you at least laugh at it? I know people did, and it's fine. But for me, I was like, "This is dumb." Did you enjoy at least that little bit? No, I thought it was. I'm like, finally, someone's doing it back to him. So that was all I got out of that. It sounded like Jr. was was not happy about it either, and he goes. Well, I didn't imagine I'd ever see this from Sting. <laughs> Aww. Aww. They are such a like, fucking ooh. old fuddy duddy sometimes. But I loved but it. yeah, but he's right. You know? What a thought. Yeah. So I think it's big news. But I also don't know that they have a track record that makes me go, This is going to be fantastic. They bring in a lot of people to lose to the elite and I'm not really all that interested to see Daniel Bryan have a banger of a match and lose right away and then bow to them in the ring and come out and cut a promo next week and say, These, this is the best company in the world. Like, it's pretty transparent at this point, and I just I don't see the appeal, personally. Clem, is there anything about this these two signings you wanted to, to throw out there? I agree with you. Is I feel like until AEW can better separate themselves out from this like late 2000 WCW vibe that they have right now. Um, I don't know if I want Daniel Bryan there. Cause it really, I don't know if you guys have been listening to my world, the Jeff Jarrett pro podcast a lot, but him talking about like WCW, I'm like, this sounds really familiar. Him talking about like the way it seems to just work for performers who are, you know, in the elite or at this level where, clearly we're paying shit tons of money to this person and we need to do this or I might argue at the behest of Tony Connor who he loves at this moment it sucks so yeah I don't want Daniel Bryan to go in even if he steamrolls everyone um because then it just further perpetuates this thing in pro wrestling that we've seen time and again is WWE is great at making people we want to use that name value don't we and we build stories and characters yeah. around them but then yeah. fuck you know the people who we've tried to build or we're yeah. supposed to have built yeah. yeah and who's AEW built well like private parties joke now uh -huh. and you really haven't done much with top flight lately yeah. I mean, um, cool. arguably MJ I'd say MJF but he had it he, he had it going yeah. in Mm -hmm. hangman kind of but like yeah. even then it seems like they're so hot and cold with these people like scorpio sky at moments yeah. you're like yeah i could see you be doing this darby allen yeah but then yeah they darby allen's really it i would say where they've yeah. persistently kept heat under him mm -hmm. but yeah. it feels so hot and cold with people because i would are i i would love to be a fly on the wall in meetings there over WWE and be like, 
listening to him say like, yeah, I got this great idea for Scorpio Sky. He's going to do this. We'll build it up. And then he, you know what? He's going to go over and he's going to win the TNT championship. Whoa, 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 buddy, buddy. Yeah. We got that title on somebody else or, you know, Hangman, this is it. We built that arc. We've done this. He's going to triumph. He's got the Dark Order behind him. He's going to take the AEW title off of Kenny and they're going to fall apart. Whoa. No, no, no. We're, we're still building that up. You know, Kenny, Kenny's got that gold. He's finally at the head of a company for an extended period of time. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I what I because I think that the the thing that they could do the best is if they get these two signings and throw out the book and say let's start over and rewrite what we're doing and make a bunch of changes and surprises because the one thing they've also done since they've started good or bad has been consistent to the point of predictable. How many times did I didn't did I not even watch the shows, look at the card and tell you who I figured would probably win based off the direction their stories are and was right? You know what I mean? Like yeah. it we were doing prediction shows for a while, but stopped because it was just kind of like, I wasn't even watching the show and I was guessing right. They're predictably consistent because it's obvious to see what Tony Khan's doing. He's not a very subtle person. You know what I mean? Like even his announcements in nine days, nine days, nine days, I'm talking about nine days. I guess I know how many days away it's going to be. <laughs> he writes the book the same way. So he's been screaming hangman page and Kenny Omega for two years. It's no doubt. So I think what would make it great is if if they get these two dudes and then say, okay, everything is different now. Throw it out and let's start over because we're going to make a bunch of changes that no one's going to see coming and it's going to fucking be hot. And then I would th- I, then I would say we're on to something. But I also – I think that you don't want to do change for change's sake. I think you also – as much as it can be good to plan out in advance, I think it can also be a crutch that holds you back when you stick to a plan, when something else is happening. Matter of fact, would we even have Daniel Bryan as the name value he is if WWE stuck to the plan? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. I'm going to hit the chat again. Uh, anything you want me to you want to throw in there, Amanda or Clump, before I hit the chat? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. okay. We're just making sure good. We're, going, we're on it. Uh, Jeremy does say there's a reason. Oh, wait, hold on. Stackhouse has been pretty good lately. Have to watch Impact now. Kiro says because of in October, all these companies are going to be in one big show. Maybe. Well, I mean, I like the talent over there. I just for whatever reason, Impact has all this talent I really like, and fail to somehow become compelling. I'm very excited for MLW to be honest, and I think that it would be great if CM Punk and Brian Danielson showed up at MLW just to throw everyone a curveball. Even if they did sign to AEW, they should appear somewhere else first. Just to make everyone go, what? You're not going to AEW? And then make the AEW a surprise. Like, they should show up in ROH or something. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, God. Just God, to fuck with people. ROH just ruined it. Well, whatever. I don't uh, want to see has CM been pretty Punk good. versus Matt Taven. No way. God, that's garbage. Do CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan in ROH. Just do a one-off. And have them show up. And be like, no, no, I'm not going to let you do that. Like, and have a fucking thing. I don't think and, Hunter would do that with the book. I don't know what they do. Uh, let's see. Stackhouse has been pretty good. He goes, I'm on the main now, and it's pretty brutal. I mean, what? Uh, Jeremy does say, there's a reason E in AEW stands for elite. It's all about the elite, and nobody else matters. That was my biggest worry when AEW was first announced. I was worried all these people would sign, and the only people who would who who would anything of value going on would be the elite. And I think that... I think it's not entirely that, but it's close. It is close to that, I feel. Yeah. Stackhouse says they build people up just to feed them to ex-WWE guys. That's kind of true, too. Uh, Kiro says the minute they announced that network, what network their show would be on, I made a bold claim that AEW was WCW 2.0. Yeah, it turns out it was TNA 2.0. We were both wrong. Mm-hmm. Justin Time says someone on Twitter made a good point. They were worrying about Brian because of AEW's growing list of injuries, which I don't blame them. If Brian got injured in AEW, the backlash from fans would be astronomical. The thing is this. I don't think there would be backlash from fans. I think people go, oh, well, it's tough business and people get hurt. They're not accepting that there are so many injuries now. Only people who talk about injuries are considered non-fans. And they're considered back talking and, sl- and, and talking shit. I see the conversation all the time. When someone gets injured, the AEW fans all talk about how, hey, it just happens, freak accident, there was no way to stop it. 
But when other people say, yeah, maybe, but there's a lot of freak accidents and maybe that ought to be addressed. Everyone goes, what, why, why do you even watch? Stop watching. Why do you hate wrestling? And you're like, no, come on. That's not the conversation. So I don't know that there would be backlash. I think people go, ah, well, it's just his time, I guess. Um, Stackhouse says, that's a great point, just in time. And Carol says, someone's going to drop Brian on his head if he goes. Stackhouse says, AEW doesn't really seem like the safest place for somebody with neck problems. Yeah. Uh, just in time uh, says, looking forward to Saturday. Yeah, or concussions. Hmm. Um, yeah, look at Guevara. Look at Guevara. Sorry, he's one, he's one like concussion away from like probably. It'll be his time. farewell match one way or the other. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, look at Hardy. Look at uh, Ricky Starks. It's, I mean, it just happens, man. Uh, happens a lot. Justin Time says, looking forward to Saturday. MLW's Battle Riot is going to be on a TV. Yep, I'm super excited about that this Saturday. Kiro yeah. says, CM Punk showed up in WWE, the, then just goes to AEW. Oh, yeah, that'd be so good. Just, like, do a one-off thing. Sort of like how, how Christian showed up at Rumble and then popped up at AEW. Have Punk show up on, like, SummerSlam. And then just show up on AEW anyways. Just so people like fucking lose it. I would love it. Mm-hmm. But those are my thoughts on Punk and Dana Bryan. I think it's it's cool and exciting if it happens, but there's a lot of reason to not just assume this is it. This is the big change. I saw some people saying with this announcement, it's clear that eight, the WWE's uh, probably not going to be around in five years. It's, we're definitely seeing the end of the Vince McMahon creation. I saw like a number of people toasting, like tweeting and posting shit on Reddit, and also like. The WWE is bigger than that, even even if they stopped showing regular live TV, WWE will still be in existence in some way. There's just yeah, the too much there. Is, yeah. It's crazy. But it could be it could change. But I don't think their signing alone will do it because I think there's a lot of reasons to be concerned and see how it plays out. Anything either of you want to say about the, the two of them that we missed? Mm-mm. Nah, I think we're good. For me at least. Uh, Thunder Rosa signed with AEW. I think that's pretty cool. I, I thought it was kind of obvious. I guess the big news really is that that means that she was uh, allowed out of her NWA contract, which is supposed to go through next year. I believe it was supposed to be October or November of next year. It was supposed to mm-hmm. yeah. supposed to expire. It so it was a long time that she was still supposed to be there. So the fact that they dropped her from that contract, I don't know, man. She hasn't been used over there much. I just don't know. I just think it's a little bit weird. But she is an AEW now, which means she can continue Mission Pro. And I think that's been her big thing is that wherever she went, she needed to be able to do Mission Pro with no issues. Yeah. And she has proven that she's capable of doing that. No one on the AEW roster has the work schedule that Thunder Rose has had. No. She has been showing up on NWA, on AEW, on pay-per-views, and on her own Mission Pro. And sometimes they are days back-to-back in different cities. She's running old territory like schedule where every day oh, yeah. she's flying somewhere else landing when she made that big, um, there was that night that she was at mission pro. And at the end of the show of mission pro, she runs out, grabs a fucking flight and ends up on AEW that night ran straight to the ring or it was reversed. I think maybe she was on the pre-show and then showed up in a mission pro that night. Like it was one of those things where it's like in the same night, she was on two shows in two different cities. Cause that's how she is. So I think that if anyone deserves it and is, and has earned it and showed that they're capable of pulling it off, it's her. Yeah. And, and I think, I think she's going to make AEW, a terrific referee. Yeah. And I think AEW has a lot of the people who work for them have gotten lazy. I mean, some yes. people still do some indie shows. Other people won't. And yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is or anything like that well mm-hmm. yeah i know but it's like still it's like okay well you know you're only I've... on you're on tnt you know yeah. i mean who, i don't even have tnt so i have to like <laughs> i have to watch it on streams yeah i know illegally yeah and i'm not paying for cable just for that no yeah no i mean i've heard that from from people I know who are involved in the business much deeper than I am, that there is a sense of comfortability around a lot of the, around a good chunk of the talent there that they feel like that they did it, they made it and this is it. Um, so yeah, I don't think Thunder Rosa has found that place yet. Uh, let me see. Peptina says the forever intern. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, Rad Gnarly giving us a raid. Pum, 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 pum. Thanks, Rad. Rad. Cheers to Rad Gnarly. Um, let me see. Stackhouse says, just finished Slammiversary. It was pretty good. Omega vs. Callahan was actually great. Good. Callahan lost it. Didn't someone... Oh, Jay White showed up at the end of that. Mm -hmm. uh, Kiro says... Let me see. Okay. Well, I was just reading it through. Kira was saying that he was thinking of something dark but accurate because of the the idea that people are saying that the, with the arrival of CM Punk and Daniel Bryan to AEW, that AEW or the WWE could likely go out of business. And he's saying it's it's dark to say, but if he scopes out some, he goes if if WWE can survive the Chris Benoit situation with minor backlash to the company, why would contractually losing two draws make them disappear? Um, he goes, it was the most accurate thing you could think of. And, yeah, I could see that, too, that they, they've definitely gone through a lot worse than losing good wrestlers and un other companies getting good wrestlers. The other thing, too, is it doesn't come down to roster. Look at TNA. Even when TNA was going head-to-head -head on Mondays because they decided we were going to do it and go after Monday Night Raw and they could never pull up above, like, a, it was like 500,000, 600,000 viewers or whatever. I don't know. I'm not into ratings. But it was pretty low, a uh, million tops, I think. And they ended up having to move their nights. But they had a huge roster of awesome talent and legends in a bunch of people in creative who've been doing it for years successfully. And they could never pull the nose up on it. And it's kind of is where it is now. And it's still like one of the least viewed companies and not from lack of talent. I don't think that the roster has a, a lot to do with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But. It doesn't mean it's not exciting in some ways. Uh, let me see other debuts and returns because that's what we're hitting today. Um, got the NXTs. Uh, Nick Gage. Nick Gage showed up on AEW as the second of the five levels of hell of Trials of Hercules because Jericho is literally Hercules now. Uh, what? No, but... He is, and... For the record, well, I'm going to let you talk about Nick Gage. I want to pull up something that uh, was sent to me not that long ago about the trademarks that Jericho has uh, attempted to um, trademark the trademarks that he's going for. What was that? Who said something? You know, oh. yeah, it's a good Lord. Uh, you know, I, I'm really curious, like, you know, and yeah, is it? No, MDK, I'll fucking do, whatever. My fingers are too, whatever. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm a little, a little too tipsy to do that. Anyways, but I am down gang affiliated. Word. Yes. But um, it's going to be very interesting because the language and, of course, yeah. the blood. So is this going to be not oh. sanctioned like they did with the other, the other time with uh, Britt Baker and in that whole match? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, th I think they're getting looser with blood because, like, there was blood this week on Dynamite, but yeah, there was a lot of blood. Well, a lot. Well, for them, it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. There's blood every single week, oh, and it? I do think that they need to get. Uh, it didn't ruin the match by any means, but I they again caught lance archer cutting himself and grabbing his razor blade they just, they've got to stop catching that on camera <laughs> like yeah. that is it's it's happening a lot you know who's um, doing but, the angles i think calling hmm. it is cody i think he's calling the nick gage angle the no the shots the oh the shot. shots the camera shots yeah. oh maybe huh? well cody maybe thinks that people are quicker and better at it than than they are because maybe people aren't learning stuff Chris Jericho, or as Kuro calls him, Jericles, he did put in trademark for the nicknames Lay Sex Gods, God of War, and God of Thunder. And now he's doing a Five Tribulations of Hercules. Jericho literally thinks that he is a god of wrestling, and this is this is what we get. So the thing is this, is that the, this is the big feud, right? Uh, Jericho versus MJF. It's all building to MJF. Mm-hmm. My, again, concern here, because at first I was like, that's pretty fucking cool. We got Nick Gage. And then I go, but do I really want to see Nick Gage job out to Jericho so Jericho can say that he's just that tough? Because obviously they're moving forward with this. Mm -hmm. I don't need Nick Gage to give credibility to Jericho. 
I don't. And I don't really think that Jericho latching on to everyone that he thinks is popular to try to get popularity outside of that. Like this feels like it's absolutely Jericho getting the rub from Nick Gage to show a credibility. And my concern is, is, is Nick Gage at this point has a match this week with Cardona. Who's never even been in a hardcore match ever. Not even a street fight in WWE. And you've got Jericho who hasn't, He's done some matches that have weapons, and there's that Dean Ambrose Asylum thing, but realistically, it's all been pretty watered down, especially consider what Nick Gage is. And I think if Nick Gage isn't careful, he's going to start to look a little watered down, being the safe guy that does things that seem dangerous for all these old stars who are trying to get credibility now that they're on the indie scene. They're trying, I think that, I think we're dangerously close already that Nick Gage could end up feeling a little watered down because. Other people needed to beat him to get... I mean, look what happened to Eddie Kingston. Well, poor Eddie. Poor yeah, Eddie. I, He's not what he was when he got there. Yeah. I'm like, that still makes me mad about Eddie Kingston. But you know, I, I, I'll I say it here on episode one. So remember when you heard this then. For a weird reason, and I don't know why, but why do I feel like Punk and Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson, are going to be two of those levels. I thought that too. Mm -hmm. I thought there's a possibility of that. Yeah, there's a huge because Because the other thing is this. If Nick mm -hmm. Gage is number two, that means MJF has in mind three other people who are tougher than Nick Gage. And like Stackhouse is saying here in the chat, uh, I'm interested to see what Jericho is willing to do with him uh, and then goes Nick Gage is a fucking animal not just a gimmick and I keep hearing that and yeah. I believe it and we've saw the stuff with David Arquette and I, I was there I was there I was there yeah my brother was there too he didn't yeah he did not hold back no no, no. the only thing that happened really was Arquette really did not know what he was getting his, himself into and then when he hit the artery our cat started to freak out and Gage is, you know, like, it's okay. You know, I, you're all right. I got you, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And that's when our cat actually really punched Gage. He was like, oh, fuck that. Yeah. And then Nick Gage is like, okay, dude, well, then I'm going to punch you right back. And then let's see what, how this goes. And our cat yeah. got punched back and then went, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Just sorry. Like, just kidding. The thing is, is Nick Gage is the most legit motherfucker in all the business and is actually really fucking safe. But the thing is, is it's our fucking perception to believe that he's definitely not safe. And he definitely tried to kill David Arquette. And he's also crazy because when he was bleeding out and dying, he was telling them to continue the match and he flatlined on the way to the hospital. Oh. And then he woke up and goes, I can't believe you guys fucking cut the match. And everyone's like, okay, dude, fucking relax on the match thing. You know, so I get it. He's legit as fuck, and I want him to stay that way. My concern is we have him against fucking as much as I love Matt Cardona. This has to be fucking brutal. This has to be bad. And as much as I don't like Jericho, Jericho is going to win this match, and it has to be for some reason that takes it all out of the control of Jericho. Like something has to fucking nearly kill Nick Gage. Someone has to lock him in a shark cage and throw him in the ocean. Like, something's got to happen because the last thing I want is just Jericho getting some clean win from some dumb move on Nick Gage and being like, see, I'm tougher than Nick Gage. And everyone goes, yeah, you are. Like, what? No, no one's tougher than Nick Gage. I'm a cool dad. I'm a cool dad. Yeah. Jeremy does say, didn't MJF say that Jericho would have to run through the entire pinnacle to get to MJF? Nick Gage isn't part of the pinnacle from my understanding. That was also mm -hmm. my understanding. But this shit changes yeah. week to week, I think. Well, uh, Rad, you know, Tony's got ADD or something, so, you know. He definitely takes ADD medication. Uh, yeah, Rad Gnarly yeah. says, <laughs> they have a week to convince Nick Gage that wrestling is a work. I know. That's the other thing that's, thing's funny, too, is, like, I could see Jericho sitting down with him being like, dude, no, you're not stabbing me with a knife. Like, can we talk <laughs> about moves, please? And he's all like, let me show you this other knife I have. It's even better. <laughs> It's yeah. like, stop with the knife stuff. Like, <laughs> just a little. Yeah, just learn that. In, learn yeah. that in uh, Eastern Bloc. 
Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. I be, and I'm sure. So I'll hit the meat, like, man. Don't even worry about it. I'll hit you right in the yeah. meat. You could no. Hit you right there. No, I, I'm sure that like Janella, can you you know maybe talk to him? And Joey's probably like, fuck no. That you got That'd be yourselves funny. into this shit, you know. It'd be so funny. I'm just say, Jericho I'm just watched. walked over to Janella and said, "Can you talk to Gage for me? He's like being real serious about this." <laughs> yeah. Janelle's like, dude. Yeah. They, no. No, I can see that. Be, no, no. Um, yes, Justin Time says this. This is my other concern about it. Here's the other, I mean, two things. But he says, Nick Gage is more than likely going to obliterate Jericho, all for it to end with the shitty Judas effect, all for this predictable story with MJF. Right. And that's my concern. It's going to end in something like that. And my other thing is that it was pretty obvious in the past, like, two weeks of AEW, every single match ends in weapons or interference or something that would disqualify anyone in any match mm -hmm. but they always have the ref either looking up at the sky for no reason being stupidly cartoonishly distracted by almost nothing happening at all that it's like it gets to a point to me where it's like can you really say you're the company that has no dqs just simply by not calling the dq but allowing all the same shit to happen like isn't yeah. that a little insulting to the to the, our intelligence that's what I feel like. I feel like it's a little patronizing to be like, yeah, but we don't have DQs. He literally punched him in the face with brass knuckles. And then the ref was like, what are the brass knuckles for? And he goes, nothing. He goes, sounds good to me. And you're like, fucking Christ. <laughs> it's uh, true. I mean, like, I, I want to truly believe what's happened here is that AEW wanted to be ECW from the outset. Like, they just never wanted to admit it. I feel like that's been the... The, big, yes. the goal of Tony Khan is he wants to revive ECW in every single way. Yeah. But he's perpetual. He's created on this weird fucking lie, you know, and it's slowly going there. It's like, well, why did you, why did you bring these people in? Why, why did you not try and do that with TN, TNT? Why did you not try and go for a TVMA rating? What, you know, yeah, you get me? Yeah, no, I feel like too. I feel like um, as much as a lot of people go like, "Oh, there's WCW vibes and stuff," I definitely get a bunch of ECW vibes. And I liked ECW more when I was a kid than when I rewatch stuff now. I mean, some of it's cool, but some of it you watch and go, "I don't know about this." I mean, I don't know. It didn't all age great, but I think it's safe to say about literally every wrestling company ever. Not everything ages great. It's part of the the thing of wrestling. So I don't know. Some of it's just not for me. But I feel like I agree with you. It feels a lot like revitalizing ECW in a lot of ways. And I wish that they would just lean into that more. Stop pretending they're trying to be sports-based and just be like, no, you know what? We're going to be hardcore-based. A lot of our rules just don't exist. And we're just going to stick by that. There are no countouts. You know what I mean? Just stick by that. Just say, we don't have, we don't do countouts because we think that that's pussy shit. And then people go, oh, I can't believe Tony Khan just said that on an interview. And you go, okay, I guess it's a badass company that's just here to kick asses. And I would totally buy in. But when they go, we're sports-based and we have rules and the refs are very important. And then you watch it and go, what is he talking about? <laughs> that was a fucking lie. Yeah. <laughs> that one was a lie. Just lean into the ECW vibes. Lean into it. Red Gnarly says, it's also AEW throwing indie-ish at the wall to see what sticks. It's why we got Warhorse versus Cody and such. Yeah, 100%. The thing is, I, I do think Nick Gage is great. I think it's awesome to bring him in. And I'm super excited. I wish it wasn't against Jericho so much. And if it was going to be against yeah. Jericho, I wish he was the fifth guy. Be the very end. Yeah. Because because Nick Cage's credibility on the indies is through the fucking roof, man. Yeah. Like, so like he scares he scares me, and he's yes. you know I have a little story, story time. I was at this um, show that Teddy Hart, good lord, had actually put together in Las Vegas after Ring of Honor, and um, it was really interesting because. You know, like after like after the ROH show, I walked by and there was Nick Gage, and he was like, "Girl, you were you were fucking get going at it at the at, you know in the front row," and I'm like, "Jesus Christ, okay." Mm -hmm. And but and then he was like, he's like, you want, he says, "I'm gonna wrestle this demon." I'm like, "Where are you wrestling?" And so he gave me the card. He's like, "You gotta be there," and I'm like, "Okay." And he goes, "No, seriously, you have to be there." And I'm like, "Okay." And so I was talking to friend of mine he just he leans and in he goes i will fucking stab you if you're not there and i go okay no, no i no, get it <laughs> no, get, no get this so i told yeah. i was telling one of my friends and actually i'll just say shane taylor i said 
you know, I said, um, he was like, what are you doing afterwards? I said, well, I'm hungry, but Nick Gage told me that I have to go to the show. And he goes, fuck. He says, you know what? Nick Gage tells you to go to a fucking show or something to do. You better fucking do it. And I'm like, fuck. So we went. <laughs> and it was funny because we came in and he was like, you came. I'm glad you came. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then he put, he stops me and he goes, if anybody fucking fucks with you, they fucking say something to you, you know, look at you weird and whatever. F drop what you're doing and come find me. I'll fucking kill him for you. And I was like, uh, okay. It was very it was all sharpening a knife on a piece of leather. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I was like, yeah. holy shit. So, yeah. Yeah, and, dude's awesome. Yeah, and then it's funny because he wrestled um, out at our local promotion, and he, like, totally remembers that. He goes, he's like, you're doing good? And I go, well, you know, there are some people on Twitter, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. I got it. I get it. It's okay. Yeah. You don't need, we don't need murder, death, kill right now. Yep. But yes. Uh. Clumper, is there something you were going to throw in on there? I agree with you. I think it's it's cool that he's here, but yeah, it's again, kind of feels like, oh yeah, we got this awesome thing. We're going to put him coined toward the bottom, which well, like, I don't I feel like putting him in number two part. is bad. Yeah, like, make this bigger. Make it more an event. Because it also means that Nick Gage is just slightly more dangerous than Sean Spears. And fucking come on. Yeah. Shit, <laughs> Sabu in WWE C W got better. Yeah. Uh, Stackhouse says people are gonna be pissed if Jericho beats Gage clean. They have to have some sort of fuckery, dude. They got fuckery in every single match, anyways. So Don't they gotta worry, do something. That's coming. That's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Uh, and he goes, dude introduces himself as Nick fucking Gage, even in the locker room. Dude is fucking intense. Hell yeah, dude. And Red yeah. says, uh, yeah, but his legitimacy seems to be tied. Oop, shoot. Uh, tied into the fact that he seems to be too dumb to know when to quit, which is true. And he goes, like, he comes off as a danger to himself uh, before others. They got to be careful they don't give off uh, GCW vibes. And we got a few people jumping in. We got Toku stream reviews. Cheers, Toku. Thanks for coming through. I think with Gage. And cheers to Rad is... Gnarly. I like his contributions here. But yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's just it. Is is The Nick Gage legitimacy is tied into. He doesn't fucking get it. He's a lunatic, like literal, actual, insane, and is hurting people like he doesn't understand you're not supposed to. But I will say, if you haven't heard the the Sam Roberts interview with Nick Gage, it was like two or three episodes ago. Go listen to it. It changed all of my perception about Nick Gage. I actually like him so much more than I did going into that. And I think that it gives you a whole other light on him and exactly who he is, what he's about. And I think that... I think that could shift your your mindset there as far as that. Not everyone, obviously, but I would say listen to that interview. Um, but even the dark side of the ring was another glimpse at like how intense. But it's just like you know, he obviously really loves wrestling, and he really yeah. loves what he does. And sometimes with people, you know, when you have that passion, you know, you just kind of everything blacks out around you. So I I, I get that. I totally get that. But I don't think I'm liking the fact that we're going to get like a Disney version of Nick Gage. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, that's my concern because even MJF was Nick freaking Gage. And you're kind of like, I wish they would have just been really careful and bleeped it or had him, had, had him even cut his own mic. Like put a button on the mic so he could cut it like it was having an, an issue. You no, know what I mean? Just so you could it, make it look like he said fucking. Yeah, I think – um when he gage did come out i think he was like he was like fucking something and he, no mic on him no sound but you saw the mouth move and i'm like yeah that's the word fucking i know what the mouth looks like when you're saying that word fuck i believe you <laughs> uh just in time says just saying sean spears in the same sense as Nick's gage is a fucking crime dude that's my point is they said all right we'll go against sean spears and they're like uh i beat sean spears and then he goes well, if you beat Sean Spears, can you beat Nick Gage? And then you're like, what? 
Why is he the next step? I just think that there's yeah. a real we're walking a fine line where we could be destroying some of the credibility of Nick Gage if he keeps wrestling these non-hardcore guys, and we'll see how it goes. He needs to, he, like they need to get blood in this match, and they need to not use razor blades to do it. Flat out. Oh, Nick Gage will make sure. I hope he does. Uh, Jeremy yeah. does say AEW completely butchered the brass knuckle spot with Orange Cassidy and the blade. I'm sure. They can add some fuckery to Nick Gage death match. Oh, dude, I'm sure. Dude, there's no doubt about it. They, the entire Fighter Fest night two had fuckery in every single match. Yep. It wasn't as good as night one. I like night one more. Um, night one was better. Yeah. But mm-hmm. let me see. As far as other returns and surprises, I think that was all of them over the Hello. last. Chavo Guerrero, that's a really good point. So, a uh, Andrade comes out, tries to cut a promo, says he's got a big surprise. Tony Schiavone has a really weird reaction. He's almost looking like he's trying not to belch. He's like, what? 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 <laughs> and then he's all like, Chavo Guerrero Jr. And Chavo Guerrero comes out. And I'm all like, is this that big of a deal? The other thing that was weird about it, I, we give flack to WWE for this specifically, and we have on the show specifically given flack to WWE for this. So I have to point it out: all of their Mexicans of the night were in that one segment. Mm-hmm. You now have Andrade with a translator who doesn't talk. Go figure. You have Andrade now also with Chavo Guerrero, and you have Penta and Phoenix, and Alex Marvez, and Alex Marvez all in this this one segment and I was like do we need to cluster this way like does this have to be that way and you have Pac who obviously was the mouthpiece Pac's for the other side yeah, he was an odd man out but he was the mouthpiece right or Pac just loves Mexican food that could be it too <laughs> he's just a big fan of enchiladas but yeah I just it's I just think that like hey we we didn't it didn't have to be this way specifically and not for this long I didn't think but Chava Guerrero is a big uh, is a good name to pick up. He trains so many people. Almost all anything you see in Hollywood where someone's wrestling or doing a wrestling thing, they're probably trained by Chavo. He does a I'm lot sure of training. Probably why he's there to do I, a lot of that also behind the scenes too. Because you know they really don't have a development, and I don't, do not call. I would not call the Nightmare Factory developmental. No. Well, no. neither would Tony Khan. Tony Khan well, literally went on I, on. After the show, he came out and said, we don't have a performance center. All we have is AEW Dark Elevation, which told me two things. One, he doesn't think very highly of the Nightmare Factory. And two, he doesn't understand what happens at the performance center. Because if you think the performance center is just them having um, matches back-to-back, that's not all that goes into training. I mean, we're not there, but we know that there's more than that going on. But... Like I said, well, like what you were just saying, I think that having Chavo Guerrero there is really great because I do think it can lend a huge benefit to people learning who are willing to listen. Because Chavo is an amazing trainer. Even out here in, in Tucson, uh, there's been a, a company that's brought him out a couple times to do group trainings and seminars and stuff. He's great. He's fucking great. Yeah, but we're, when you say ahead. people that are willing to listen, what, at what level are they there? Because I'm sure talent would love to listen to him, but I feel like he has a lot to provide at higher levels too. And... Are they gonna let him? Are they gonna listen? Because I, as far as I know, Chavo was part of the writing and creative for Lucha Underground, and while Lucha yes. Underground fell apart and had a lot of terrible things related to the TV contracts, the stories were good, the yeah. production was good. If it could come back without the other bullshit, it was a fantastic show. You know, yeah. They bring in these oh, yeah. people that have done a lot, but then we don't really see it time and again and again and again yeah i think it, yeah they're definitely filling up the back with a lot of great voices it's just a matter of is it all noise or not uh rad gnarly does say i did like the chavo pickup as an on-screen hype man and as a producer if that's the way they're going yeah i like that too i did think it was kind of funny andrade's like trying to say something and chavo almost looks at him all like what and takes the mic and he goes like oh let me explain it to Pac because he's like you're the only one here that doesn't speak two languages So it was his way of addressing the audience without addressing the audience and rewording everything Andrade had just said to make it make sense real quick. So I think also if he's there to help Andrade through promos in general and learn how to do promos because that's always been his problem. I mean, we talked about it even even when he came over. 
the issue was yeah. never his in-ring work. It was always that he can't connect to fans and his promos are not good. And I don't think he's had a decent promo since he's got there. So having a Chavo there could be fucking absolutely what he needs. But then what happened to Vicky? She's gone? She's out of the picture? Because that was a thing no, too, right? Vicky's... No, she's still there. She's there with Andrade? No, Nyla Rose. But Cause she, maybe she was coming out with Andrade. Yeah, she was. But she had but Nyla Rose yesterday had that big match. Mm. So. Yeah. I think I'd rather Chavo with him anyways. If I'm being yeah. honest, I think Chavo's a better promo than Vicky too. Vicky just gives. Yeah, she's really nice though. I met her at a I at a convention her. I once. Vicky. I yeah. love Vicky. And you know what's cool about her? If you run into her, and bring up anything about Eddie or talk to Eddie stories, she'll go on and on. She loves talking about Eddie. Oh yeah. And it's really cool. It's fucking crazy. I was. I really hope that when she came around and this happened on, um, dark. Um. Uh, Ricky Starks was wrestling a match and she was watching with somebody else on the whole list. And she was kind of like flirting with him. And he's like, Oh, you like that, huh? What about this? And whatever. And I thought, Oh, that'd be great. Bring the cougar back, you know? Yeah, that's funny. But, but she wore the necklace the other day. So, the, back. That's good. Uh, just in time to say that Andrade and Death Triangle segment sucked. I had no idea what any of them were talking about because 90% of it was in Spanish. Also, there was two translators out there and they didn't even bother to translate shit. Yeah, I thought it was poorly put together. I wasn't into it. I didn't care about it. I couldn't tell if there was actually heat between the two of them or if they were trying to be friends. It was it, like, it was weird. I, I didn't get any of it, honestly. Um, and I understand a, an okay amount of Spanish, but like I was having a tough time with it. Go ahead, Trump. Uh, translator translator segments generally are rough um like i don't know why we keep going back to it i can't think of a translator segment that's done well for me other than having somebody speak and having subtitles which can be great or having somebody go between japanese or spanish and english and then say yes. it for themselves when yeah, it's but andrade just... has a really tough time with english to where to the point where i think by having the translator you don't actually have the mic be handed back and forth you have the translator and just speak on behalf of andrade effectively at that point and if he starts to say something you have a moment where andrade goes like no 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 and then says something audibly in spanish and then you have the translator kind of say okay what i mean is and then go on a whole other thing like you just make it almost you don't make it a direct translation no like i know what you what you're saying like i think i know what you're saying i could be way off but like where someone says something in Spanish, and then the translator repeats it in English, and then back and forth. Yeah, it yeah, just, that wouldn't work. And, and it it always tends to go the same way in my experience, where it's translator going back and forth, and at some point somebody says the line, "Well, I know you don't understand, but let me say this, or I'll speak for myself." And then it's just just do it. Like yeah, Shinsuke Nakamura, his promo in advance of the Royal Rumble was an amazing promo. I okay. loved it. Asuka's cut amazing promos in Spanish or sorry in Japanese and in English and it's worked out great and they don't yeah. need this translator if anything I think in both cases having somebody come out and speak for them would be shitty because I think of like Andrade with Zelina was good but it got shitty in the main roster I think of WCW had that one German mm -hmm. dude who was so in in ineffective at his role that I forget his name where he's supposed to speak, he spoke in German and they had a translator. It sucked. Yeah. yeah. That's true. You know who does translation well? But do you only, it's only during the press conferences. But when New Japan has those big press conferences for something like a G1, Best and Super Juniors, things like that, when they, you know, if it's a person who, you know, Jap they don't speak Japanese, and then they do the translation, I mean, they're doing it like pretty much word for word and then when you see like interviews from backstage and they're speaking japanese you see the subtitles is pretty because i asked somebody like yeah. that knows japanese and i and they were like yeah it's pretty much almost word for word that's good so. yeah i mean it can work but i think there's a really good point it doesn't know it doesn't work most of the time but i also think yeah. that it also doesn't work to bring out someone identifiably as your translator and not have them speak at all yeah you know what I mean? Like that person was noted to be his translator and literally yeah. said nothing and didn't help him at all. Just stood mm -hmm. there. 
and you're like, I don't. Then why is he here? Like, yeah, you got a paycheck. Uh, yeah, either just don't bring him out then. I guess. Uh, Justin does say apparently the travel signing was because they didn't uh, fans didn't like Vicky with Andrade. Yeah, I can see that. But also, I think that Chavo's Chavo's getting that money, man. I think it was just a matter of time before he got signed over there. Everyone's getting signed. And I think he's going to be awesome backstage. I think he's going to be huge. Um, like Rad Gnarly was saying, for production and stuff. Um, people listen. People listen to what? If people listen. If people listen, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the other thing, too. I've heard that narrative a few times where people are back there trying to help and coach, and they get to a point where they feel like they're talking to a bunch of brick walls and a bunch of people who know better and a bunch of... Uh, you know what you're talking about, old man kind of stuff. I've heard that a, uh, a few times. But as far as everything else goes, overall, I don't know of any other returns or surprises. No, no, no more returns. Mickey James and Impact, she showed up, mm-hmm. which could be good. We'll see. She's promoting That's a show with NWA called Empower uh, in August. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, August. So there's going to be that. Um, Jay White showed up in Impact. I forget who else. I felt like there was... Oh, that guy from the Bullet Club was in the audience. The Galeo. Yes. Uh, the That's Haku's son, right? And yeah. 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 He did come yeah. out uh, on AEW, and that was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, after uh, Lance Archer won the u.s uh, iwgp u.s title and i was like that's cool because i've been curious what they're going to do with hikaleo because he is he's young yeah. but he's fucking huge yeah and if and i i'd like to think if he wasn't any good new japan wouldn't have him at this point because new japan is enough of a talent builder that they're not going to just have somebody be there and be big they're not going to have somebody be you know a, a 30 second like match even when they had great Kali he was a very mm. different great Kali than he was in uh, WWE yeah he was jacked nice oh yeah I thought it was cool I thought they didn't really tell me much about him and I didn't already know so I felt like a little outside of it and I will say that my my I'm at the point where when they show these people from NJPW as some sort of forbidden door thing I just kind of ignore it because a lot of these pop-ups we see don't come back like kenta was huge they were screaming about it talking about it. everyone said this is huge this is oh my god this is massive literally kenta never showed up in AEW again they do it because it's cool and it gives a moment and then it's like a little bit of hype for njpw which i think is nice but it's really hard to stay excited when someone shows up and then you just don't ever see him again and you go remember how huge that was you know well i do at least um i'm glad that archer has the title back because to be quite yeah. honest um i like archer better wrestling in japan than any of the mm. stuff that i've seen on AEW or whatnot yeah. yeah yeah i've heard that i've heard a number of people tell me that njpw is awesome i actually like moxley more in japan than i do in AEW. Mm-hmm. i don't know why things gotta be so different yeah that's the death rider thing yeah thank you yeah. and i don't like i don't like mox at all yeah uh i don't yeah i don't have a lot to say about most of the nights i enjoyed the first night more i do think it's kind of funny we're having two nights of fighter fest followed immediately by two nights of fight for the fallen does feel a little bit like you're trying to beef up your shows and give them all names which i think it's a little funny because they're all dynamite at the end of the day but it's all good it's all good. You got to promote. You got fans in the crowd. You got to sell tickets. You got to get people there. And if you if you make it sound special, and give the people a special feel, then it works. It's all good. Oh, Justin, time yeah. made a good point. No way, Jose debuted uh, in a vignette for Aiden English was on Impact as well. Yeah, those would be largely forgotten. I feel. Mm. I don't like that he came out as No Way Jose again. I was really hoping for a change. Ah, uh, you forgot something. Huh. I was trying to point behind me. You're trying to put your those... finger in there. No, I'm not. I... You. <laughs> I, did not, I, did not I was gonna say that a big highlight I for did. both I'm nights to me was the, the was the the win from Ricky Starks getting the FTW title 
in a match that was decent with a lot of weird moments, but it was pretty good. Uh, I got nervous for Ricky a few times, <laughs> but Ricky wins the FTW title and that's- Brian Cage is on his own. And I think that's a good thing. I think it's win-win and Ricky even cut a promo the next week and the promo was, I mean, it was a Ricky promo. It wasn't bad. It wasn't his best promo, but it was good. It's moving along and they're going to do some sort of celebration next week. It seems like Yep. I like it. I like Ricky with it. I just wish that. I mean, the, there was two titles defended that night, and one of them was FTW, which is a non-recognized title. So much yeah. so that it made story about how it's not recognized. So it's really a, like it's it's less than the twenty four seven title. Realistically, it is just this thing that someone carries around that was bestowed upon them. And a guy who loses matches a lot, like it was just weird. Like I wish the FT title meant more because I feel like. Ricky's first time holding a title in AEW, I wish meant more than it means. You know what I mean? Because it means a lot to me that he's got a title there. But then when I look at the title, I go, that's not even a recognized championship. But remember at NWA, he won, you know, at hard times, he won the, you know, the TV TV belt or whatever the hell it was, you know, after like three really good matches and then yeah. what happens he fucking what next day or two days late two days later he loses it to zicky dice of all people you yeah know? but that was kayfabe like three weeks because the I tv know. was all cut up i mean it was next day but for still, us but in kayfabe it was, was like three or four weeks i know but even if it was like that too still that's kind of short because most still people short, know yeah. that hey nwa film they film once and they film a bunch of them but yeah. you know, because even I was like, "What the fuck? You know, what was that shit?" And was, you know, I go, "Yeah." I know. He's like, but, "Well, at least I don't uh, got to get it through check to check bags." Yeah, at least I don't well, carry it. I wanted to point out with this one, had I think had it not been in Austin, and that crowd, this is what like, like. I know from talking to Ricky before that this was something that he's always wanted. He wanted that he wanted to be in front of a crowd and he wanted them to back him just because he said, that's probably one of the most, like probably that's like a once in a lifetime kind of feeling. And yeah. it's kind of cool that, you know, he had to do in Austin. Cause I know his, um, I think his, his mom, I know was there. And I think his, sister and his niece i don't know if his brother was there but um it's a big deal and Mm. everyone in austin it's a big deal too because you know i mean when ach went to nxt you know he basically passed the torch to ricky like you're the king of texas now so do with it what you will and stuff like that so i i really thought that that was it was very touching to me, but of course, anytime that he does win, I mean, when you look look at him, I mean, that's 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 no bullshit. I mean, yeah, you know it's scripted, but he actually gets very emotional about it. Oh yeah. No, I was so happy for him, but I'm was, already ready for his for a bigger thing. You know what I mean? Like I was. I'm, it's one of those things yeah. where I think he's so good that it's like. God, I wish that when he would win a title like that in his hometown, that it would have been like the TNT title. I wish it wasn't this joke of a title that they've made yeah. there. Like, but, it's just such a bummer to me. But it's only a bummer because I want so much more for him. Oh, yeah. You know? No, no, no. I, I agree. And he'll get a there. A thousand percent. But, you know, um, I think I said this on episode one, maybe, that, you know, he wins the belt. And I think it's going to happen is he's going to become so obnoxious that yeah, yeah. Well, Hobbs is going to be, what the fuck, man? And just fucking tears him a new one. Takes or can you imagine if he walks around so obnoxious that he makes it out like that is more important than the world title? Yeah, he probably will. That'd be but fun. knowing him, you know, he does everything yeah. a little bit extra. And um, I do know that I haven't seen it yet because he won't let me see. But there is a video. Um, he made he filmed another video 
Yeah. I think it's going to YouTube. It's not going. It's not going to be on AEW. He should uh, get like little clip on, like chains, little jewelry thing, and put it over the belt. And have Taz even in one of the things to be like, what the fuck is that? What did you do to my belt? <laughs> yeah, like, what, what is this shit? You know? Yeah, and he's like, like I blinged oh it out. Like, I made it better. Like, you know, I can see him now. He's got a little Gucci pouch to... Yeah. Again, I need fashion dog Ricky Starks. Hello. Yeah. Hello, toy guy. Uh, you know? Clump, what did you think about Ricky Starks getting the FTW title here? I support it. I think it's a good idea. I think he can do good getting out of he doesn't need to be attached to other people he can stand up on his own and he needs gold mm -hmm. gold whatever it might be this ain't going to be the last thing he gets far from it yeah. um honestly i'm surprised he's one i continually i'm like why are you you i see him headlining wwe rapidly yeah. like i'm 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 waiting for that because I feel like if you if you don't if you don't make him feel amazing, he's got options. That's true too. I think that he'd work out perfectly in the L.A. Knight Cameron Grimes storyline. I think he'd be a perfect third in that right now because he's got that yeah. kind of bougie personality too. So yeah, but I think also with him, that's how he was on the Indies, where it was you know, it's almost like he's that good. And no one's like really kind of taking note. And you're like, why? Why? You know, why? Because that's always been my thing is like, why don't people, you know, this guy is fucking amazing. Like, why? Why aren't you, you know, doing, you know, looking at him? Like, same with Will Hobbs. It's like, fucking Will is amazing. He just needed to figure out fucking who he was as a big guy. It's like, yeah, you're a big guy. So do I fucking care? No. But give me a reason to care that and then when he did i'm like yep you did it so but i think that um with ricky you know i mean wwe did pass on him several times mm -hmm. so you know would he go you know i think he'd go if tony and stuff you know over here they they don't do him right i think that that would happen because at the end of the day, it's like, that's what he wanted to do. And that's what he wants to do. And, you know, if fucking I have to be, you know, part of this elite bullshit and fucking Kenny Omega and all this shit and job to him. No, it's going to get old for him. Yeah. Yeah. If there's going to be a, a ceiling there, a cap because of the EVPs, then I could see, I could see becoming discontent pretty quick. Clump, was there anything else that happened in... AEW in the past two weeks of Fighter Fest that you wanted to talk about or mention? I'm not that I can think of. I'm I I, I think I'm good right now. Um, yeah, because we've hit a lot of the highlights and returns and big yeah. news items. I don't like I said. I don't. We don't have. I don't have any desire to hit this uh, segment by segment. So anything that yeah, stood out to you? Uh, yeah. Did you see the Orange Cassidy Sting stuff? Not really. Eh, I'm kind of okay over all of them. Honestly, that's rough to say, but you know. Oh. Wah, wah. Was last week Ethan Page and Darby Allen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yo, Darby Allen was like a quarter inch away from breaking his neck. Uh, Darby like, Allen's always like that. Yeah, I know, and it's terrifying. Like that coffin drop into the coffin. At first, I was like, "Oh, this will be cool," but then when you see the sides of the coffin as the whole thing caved in, I was like. I why the fuck did he do that? Like that is if he's off by an inch on either direction, that's it. Like what's the fucking payoff there? Like it was so crazy to me. Like I guess it, you just want the camera shot that bad, but I feel like you could end up paralyzed real quick in that stunt. It was really cool looking, but as an old man, I was like, I don't know, kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Good job, almost dying. Yeah, it could yeah. have been shot at, at a different angle. I didn't like the, how it was shot. But that's just me. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I know I was just being crotchety old man because I was all like, it looked good. But there's not a lot of margin for error there. Mm -hmm. That That's nerve-wracking. But it's like that with a lot of what we see here. A lot of it has not a lot of margin for error. So I'm just being crotchety old man. Uh, what were you saying, Amanda? I was 
thing that you know i mean everything that he does it's like oh you know i mean i don't know i've seen him do coffin drops off of like high things he's climbed up on and i'm always like oh fuck this guy's gonna die and i don't want to see someone die like that you know i already been there with hiromu like not mm-hmm. moving and when he broke his neck in um new japan in san francisco i already went through that i'm like i don't i don't need to see another one like that yeah i mean darby has said he doesn't see himself wrestling for very many years no and it could be that he knows that once his body slows down, he's done for. Because he can only do this now because of how young and spry he is. So he can be accurate. Okay. I mean, he's like a skater. Skaters are hyper accurate about shit. They also fall a lot. But they know what they're doing for the most part. Yeah, but sometimes so it's like, Yeah, they get out from under you. And a lot of those ones that don't go well is because the skateboard's doing something you can't control. He's controlling himself, which is why I think he can be so accurate. But I think he knows that the second his body starts to slow down and he's not accurate anymore, then it's a deadly game. You know what I mean? So enjoy him while you got him, man, because he's exciting as hell to watch right now because of that. Yeah. What was that, Glenn? I mean, I wonder, can he just – can he start evolving his style and start – he's small, but can he start adding something to it? Like, should he consider it, you know? Yeah. He's a great catch wrestler. We've seen him do some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, he's good at wrestling. So, but I don't, I don't know. That- that's not him, though, so I don't really think. It's definitely I mean, not his identity. Mm-hmm. I mean, he signed on to be part of the next Jackass movie. Yeah. So, we'll see. Yeah. And the amount of times the guys in the Jackass movies have actually broken bones and stuff doing those things oh, yeah. makes me oh, really cool. curious to see how this plays out. Can you imagine he just shows up with, like, a broken arm and it's like, yeah, he was filming Jackass. And you're like, oh, come on. <laughs> well, it's funny in that... Well, they get hurt. They're not too bad at getting hurt, the guys in Jackass, because they're pretty, oh, like, they've learned a lot of what they do. It's funny, the peop- the worst injuries I recall hearing about from Jackass, and I know this is totally not related, were Brian Deegan on an episode of Evil of Bam and Knoxville uh, tearing his urethra. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. No, but, like, Brian Deegan lost his kidneys or lost a kidney. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh, Mike is in the chat. Let's see it over here. He says, uh... Oh, Mike says, make the FTW belt mean something. I think Ricky could by pretending it's a more important thing than it is because it hasn't meant anything so far. So I do think that it's going to be Ricky's task to make it meaningful. And I do think that he's up to the task. Yeah. So I doesn't... agree with that. By the time he, he loses it, it should mean something. Mm-hmm. He doesn't do anything like half ass. So yeah. if you're going to give him this, he's going to run and it's going to be quite an adventure. And I think yeah. it's, it's going to get more and more obnoxious. And if I'm wrong about this, I'm wrong about it. But I just have this feeling it's going to be just so way, way over the top that, all right, all you can do now is like, there's Hobbs. Maybe he'll yeah. go get in the ring you know, at one point, but you know, or Nick yeah. Gage. Yeah. I was going to say like, no, uh-huh. can you imagine Nick Gage in a death match with Ricky Starks for the title? And Nick no. Gage takes the FTW it title. To legitimacy. He's done one with Masada and he got skewered. That was a long time. Ago. Yeah. 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 Masada's now, still alive. Ricky's a chicken shit. There's nothing wrong with that. Like that, he plays a great chicken no, shit. So I think that he crazy. should lose to Nick Gage in a death match, and Nick Gage no. should take the FTW title, GCW. Oh no, he would be. <laughs> I am too fucking pretty, bitch. Please come on. Look at this. I can hear him now in my head. Yeah, no. Yeah. He'd be like, "What the That's fuck so are good. they smoking?" So good. Just I love yeah, it because I don't want to touch it. <laughs> um. Let's see, Amanda, was there anything else in, NX, in in AEW over the last two weeks that you wanted to make sure we talked about? No, I um I just don't want to see um Malachi Black, which we know we are we already know he's gonna drop to Cody. And it just sucks. That's all. It's a I wish it wasn't so on the nose. I wish that Cody didn't come out dressed as the Kentucky Fried Chicken Colonel. 
<laughs> and all white with a black tie every time and white dyed hair. The dude looks like goddamn Colonel. Well, you know, they did have, yeah, they did have a lot of commercials where there were different Colonels. Yeah, they did a bunch of them, and now it's Cody, and then you got Aleister Black and all black, and I think this, like, black versus white thing is a bit on the nose for me and a little childish, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's what they're doing. They're real fucking clever, so it's like, all right, well. <laughs> but doing a great job. No, like, I saw Aleister Black come out, and I don't know if you guys have talked about this, and I know we're, like, now still talking about AEW. The Aleister. name itself pisses me off so much. Malachi Black? Yeah. Because it's just a reference. It, it's, again, a reference to their WWE character. Alistair Black refers to Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley being considered the messenger of the Dark World to his followers. Malachi is Hebrew for messenger. Good job, oh, champ. Damn. Yeah. Well, and he comes out all... That's journalism right there. Hashtag journalist. Mm-hmm. And he comes in all bruised and fucked up, and it's like, ah, oh, I get you. You're hurt from before. If he came at us top the end, it would have been great. Yeah, well, I know, think that it... him having a bruised eye from when Buddy Murphy pushed his eye yeah. into the step over a year ago is a bit weird. I know a lot of people are really happy that he's keeping the eye thing. Being like, he's keeping continuity between WWE and AEW. And no, I do think there's something. Possible. Yeah. I do think there's something kind of funny about the idea of through Black, he's actually created a continuity that's more realistic than all the other continuity people. Because they make a lot of references to WWE, but almost like it's a separate thing. Like it's a TV show we watch. He made it look like they're actually connected in the same multiverse. You know what I mean? So I do appreciate that concept. But at the same time, Alistair Black was thrown off the roof at Money in the Bank. So he should be dead. But, I mean, honestly, he shouldn't have a bruise for a year. But I can appreciate that he's, he's thinking really about his character he's... long that way. You know what I mean? He's thinking about his... He's got he's... hemophilia. He... Yes. <laughs> he just will never stop. He's I do statins. like the idea of somebody thinking on a next level of not like this is my chance to repackage. But he never thinks of his work as being inconsistent. You know what I mean? His entire work as a wrestler, regardless of company intertwines in his own mind which is really cool so i'm happy to see him do stuff but i do think that it is absolutely a reference to wwe stuff which then goes again to what you're saying earlier so and i love how his shirt on pro wrestling tees looks like a knockoff um uh black craft (laughs) shirt i said to laugh at that well that's his own uh t-shirt company isn't it no, he doesn't own it, no. He owns one. I him and Zelina. Yeah, I think he does. It's him. Do and it's his. Craft? I don't think yeah. they did. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. I, um, I will say this. Black Craft has some really great soft t-shirts. And well, one of good. my hoodies, one of my favorites. Yeah. Love it. Or is his Black Mass? I think Black Mass is the one Alistair Black has, but it's all pretty much Black Craft stuff, yeah. Yeah, you know, whatever, um, the Hot topic type of style, whatever, yeah, you know. Yeah, 100%. And uh, I think Rhea Ripley was wearing one of those shirts on, on Raw the other oh, day. Yeah. But uh, Anything else AEW you guys thought was particularly high or notable? Not, not that I can think of. Um, we talked a lot about yeah. returns and stuff. What? Getting good on Mike. Will Hobbs is getting good on the Oh, Mike. yeah. Uh, He's doing he good. Had a really good promo um, on the other night, day. I can't remember if it was on. There was so much AEW that I watched because you know me, I watched the YouTube shows. So it's all bleeding into one. Um, NXT, I'm not going to break down two weeks worth of stuff at all. Uh, I will say that overall, I'm really liking the Xia Lee stuff. She fucking murdered Martinez. And then this week, I felt like, as I'm watching it, I felt like Raquel Gonzalez was real. Fuck. Did either of you get to see that match? Zaya Lee versus Raquel Gonzalez? No. No. I have to go back and watch. Guys, go back and watch it, and we'll talk about it next week probably. I felt like Raquel was so stiff. And I felt like Zaya Lee was just 
absolutely being just hit. And by the end of it, I think she got injured. It looked she was having a hard time breathing and stuff. And they even like brought in medical staff and they sort of finished the match, but it was like kind of a mess. But it just, I don't think Raquel's that smooth or she doesn't know her own strength or something. But I was like, the whole time I'm watching it, I was like, I don't feel comfortable with this, me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like, so I don't know. But I really like Xia Lee and I'm glad. I think that they're moving her to the main roster because she made, uh, she had a match on SmackDown tapings. I wonder if that's the end of Tian Shaw and that whole story with Boa, because I don't know how you continue that on without her. You know, that's a bummer if if that's true. Yeah, but they had all these call ups. So Alaya had that big breakup with Robert Stone, and then she showed up on SmackDown tapings. I say tapings because there was stuff before the actual show aired. Uh, and Alaya was there, Zia Lee was there, Austin Theory was there, and Austin Theory just did a skit this last week where he walked away from the way, so he might be done altogether. But uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. is back in the WWE. He had a match on SmackDown taping and even cut an, an WWE exclusive interview about being back and being ready to, to show people what he's got. And it was at a SmackDown taping, so I'm really curious to see what happens next with him. Because he hasn't shown up on SmackDown TV yet, just at the tapings. So, I'm super excited about Davey Boy Smith being back. Anything you want to say about that, Clump? I'm glad, too. I I think it was, it was surprising how long it took for them to get him in there. Yeah. Um, and after NJPW, where would he go? So, yeah, seeing him in WWE again, hell yeah. I hope... I hope he goes well. Um, I'm curious to see where he goes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's going to go into NXT. I don't see anything bad happening. Yeah. Amanda, thoughts about uh, your boy Davey Boy back? You know, I the, the best smelling man in professional wrestling. Um, seriously. Uh, Vader. Vader. You know, well, I'm, I, he is. I've always heard good things about Vader so. no. But okay. My question is about it is he's never done his own singles run. He's only really done tag team. He did with Archer as Killer Elite Squad, which I miss Killer Elite Squad. Let me tell you, that's the best Lance Archer you you'll see. Yep. KES. Love them. Um and you know, he had, you know, stuff with TJ. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're, if you, they did like, you know, intergender, that'd be great to see him in Natty. That'd be fucking yeah. amazing. But I don't know, like a solo thing for him, you know, it might be kind of weird. And I don't know, because looking at the roster, I don't, I don't know where he fits into that. And that's that was my only thought too, is that I have no perception of where he fits. Like looking yeah. at it, I'm like, I guess I could see him showing up in NXT and just having some matches. Yeah. But why would you do it at a SmackDown taping then? I feel like he's got to be at SmackDown. And maybe for a while he's just doing SmackDown live shows before they figure out a spot for him. That could very well be they're back on the road again and you need some, you need a little bit of hype there and he's fantastic. But yeah, I, I have no idea where he fits in. Uh, Justin Time is in the chat says, I would have gone with the ref stoppage instead of pinning Zaya. I agree. Uh, and when you guys see it, you probably will agree too. During the 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 ref uh, checking on her, it got to a certain point where I was all like, just call it. Just just call it. M uh, producer believes that there's a possibility that Zaya was supposed to win. And that's what all that hubbub was about. And why it, it comes back from that to one bump in the pin was, well, let's just end the match, I guess, where Zaya definitively loses. But she believed that Zaya was supposed to win the title. Uh, I, I don't think so because she showed up at the SmackDown tapings, but I can see that. Um, and uh, Justin Time says, Davey Boy Jr. would fit well in the United States title scene. Dude, he's European. It's a fucked up thing to say. Wasn't that European? He's born in Canada. So it'd be inter Canada's not in Europe? 
I'm, I know I'm buzzed, but I'm not that buzz. <laughs> Come on, look it up. Where's Canada? Um, Canada is above us. Yeah, I agree. And kind of. Boy, they wish. <laughs> <laughs> there are times, boy, they wish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, well, I guess who's got the title scene now is Sheamus. Actually, yeah, Sheamus and Davy Boy. That could be some fucking good matches. Well, now you think, nice. now that you mention it, that'd be great. Because Sheamus is brutal, and Davy Boy is fucking blood sport, man. Yeah, he does not fuck around. So that could be really and, good, Sheamus. And, and Davey. the contrast between the tan that Davy Boy uh, Smith Jr. has and Sheamus's pale self. Makes oh for my good God. TV. That's true. We don't know what Seamus smells like either, so battle of the smells. And then he says Oregon Irish Continental Title Spring. soon. Take your pick. Apollo Cruz and Davy Boy Jr. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. I think I'm more excited about Seamus and Davy Boy. But okay. Yeah. Okay. Um the other thing happening in there's two other things that happen in NXT I want to make sure we talk about. One of which is all of the Cameron Grimes. LA Knight Drake Maverick stuff. Well, Drake Maverick was being involved some there, but LA Knight and and Cameron Grimes as a butler. It's better than I thought it would be, man. Fucking gold. I thought it was I thought it was going to be so good. And then every single second of those skits is so much better than I thought it was going to be. And I love both those guys. They and I'm probably biased. And still, it was so much better than I thought. I don't know if you got a chance to see any of these at all, Clump, but Amanda, what did you think of L.A. Knight and Cameron Grimes as a butler? Well, you know, obviously, recently, A.W. did a butler thing, which I thought was really yeah. stupid. So I had no, I had total, this is going to suck. I don't care if I love Cameron Grimes and, you know, L.A. Knight, but this is going to suck because that other butler shit sucked and boy that totally blew me out of the water and i think it's funny i mean even the match um from this week i mean just seeing all of the antics that you know camera grimes was doing on the outside of the ring and then la night with the whole you know with the belt you gotta hold it up here and you know and everything it was great. I mean, LA Knight coming out with Cameron Grimes behind him, and LA Knight's coming out there booing, and L and then Grimes walks right behind him and starts waving to the crowd with a big smile, and people start chanting to the moon, and LA's like, "No, no, it's not about him. It's about me." Like, so fucking that funny. Great. That was. Really and when they started great. cheering, yeah, and LA Knight started smiling when they started cheering until he realized that they were cheering for Cameron, and he was like, "Hey, wait!" Like, so fucking good, dude. Done so well. And he's like, "Stop it!" You know. Yeah. They've got great chemistry together. Surprising to me. It was surprising. I was like, it's going to go well. And then I'm watching it. I was like, oh, my God. Because I just like you, my first thought when they said, do, do the butler. I was like, AEW just did a butler thing, and it wasn't good. Like, I don't it's think the horrible. butler thing works anymore. Like, the butler thing's like an old thing that just doesn't work. And the way they're doing it, I'm like, this is hysterical to me. For me, it's working. It might not be working for a lot of people. Clump, did you see any of the, any of the butler stuff? Did not. Okay, totally fine. Yeah. We should probably send you YouTube clips or something because you're gonna you'll get a kick out of it, man. Um, yeah, it's really it's, especially it's great. You've liked Cameron Grimes as of late, haven't you? I have. I have loved Cameron Grimes. Oh, well, so far, I think this is my favorite stuff. Yeah, this is my favorite stuff of Cameron right now. So, I think yeah, I think he hit gold. I think you should definitely look. Hmm? Yeah, he hit gold with this character and yeah. and everything about it. I mean. You know, I I think it, it's just phenomenal. Yeah, and I think LA Knight is destined for Hollywood too. Yeah, I do think that we have him for a while, but I think that at the end of this, he pivots mm -hmm. to Hollywood real easy. Yeah, he could be an action star today. Yeah, but he's kind of short though. Yeah, that's why he'd be good in movies. Tom yeah, Cruise but, is four foot nine. Oh, that's right. That's right? Nice. Vin Diesel, 5'2". Oh, yeah, Vin Diesel is short. Yeah, that's right. I remember. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. He is short because I remember seeing him in Las Vegas at Bellagio, and I walked mm -hmm. by him, and I'm like, damn. I had little heels yeah. on. And yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. He'd be perfect in Hollywood because he's probably taller than most guys in Hollywood. 
So he's going to look like a giant. Probably. Because I think that he's like six foot. I don't think he's tiny. He might be 5'10". Well, I'll have to look. I think in the picture he's a couple inches taller than me. So I bet you he's six foot. Six one well, or no, something. Look at, like, if you look at the picture of him and like James Storm. James yeah. Storm, I know, is like at least 6'2", six 6'3", six yeah. maybe. And there's a considerable difference. Man, where the fuck is James Storm? We need him back. We need him somewhere on TV that we watch. I know we do need him back somewhere, and I w- I was yeah. hoping that he would do the whole AEW bullshit or whatever because he needs to be somewhere. You know what I mean? Can you imagine if he came in as the outlaw to thwart the cowboy? Yes. Like you talk about doing cowboy shit, and I haven't seen you do one shitty cowboy thing. You know? Yep. I can see that right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be amazing. A James Storm, Hangman Page, fucking Battle of the Cowboys. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. That is a totally good one. I would I think, love that. I mean, that's the these are the kinds of things that sometimes I wish Tony Khan would just, yeah. you know, just just pull people. But not just any people, pull people the who right actually people. kind of know what they're kind of talking about. Yeah. Yeah, and not, oh, I just started watching AEW, and I started watching wrestling, and oh my god, now I watch everything, and la la, I know all. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Rad Gnarly's right here with it. But I'm before that, I'm going to go. Justin Time says, uh, Grimes and Knight on Tuesday gave me JBL and Shawn Michaels vibes. Just Grimes doesn't need the money, which is funny. I like that. Uh, and then Rad Gnarly says, it's a typical scene in a bar with Paige drinking, and blam, someone breaks a beer bottle over his head. Yeah, I could see that 100%. The outlaw yeah. taking a sit and drinking out of Paige's glass and mm. being like, I thought you did cowboy shit. And I fucking fade to black, you know? Yeah. Fucking so love you it. You don't know what cowboy shit is. Yeah. You're definitely shit, but you sure ain't a cowboy. You know? Yep. I would love it. Oh, yeah. Love it. Sorry, Clump. We're going in the weeds. We should we'll get back this to shit. it. Seriously. Yeah, let's write this shit right now. We should write this shit. Fuck. Um, are you Mandy listening? Rose. Mandy Rose has been scouting female talent. It's been a little weird. I don't know what's going on with it, but I don't hate it. I do think Mandy weird. Rose is a very good talent and underutilized in a lot of senses, so I do think that there's a good possibility we see a huge breakout in Mandy Rose in the next year or two because of this. Clump? Hopefully, yeah. Right now, she's just standing in the in like sitting off to the side, like watching, going like okay, like being real judgmental and stuff. But oh, Justin Time says a good one too. He goes, camera slowly pans over to the to storm, and we get that. Sorry about your damn luck. Love it, love it. Um, yeah, I just I was just telling you about the Mandy because I think you get the idea of it, but I I doubt you you've seen it. But there's not much to it. It's other other than she seems to be scouting talent in some way, and I'm I'm kind of interested how that plays out. Um, she's been watching Frankie Monet, so the idea of Mandy Rose and Frankie Monet being teamed up in some way or another. Uh, okay. Jessica Maya has been following Frankie. It looks like Robert Stonebrand is dissolving, and Frankie Monet is like in charge now. I think it could be good, but I don't know yet. Yeah. Um, and the only other thing there. Well, what's going to happen to oh, uh, Robert Stone? What the fuck is he going to do? Um, I, I, I wish I cared. I do not like Robert Stone so much. I know, that no, I, <laughs> but I'm like, what? Are, he's probably on the chopping block. Just disappear for a while. I mean, get the, you can get the Malcolm Bivens treatment. I'll tell you this right now, though. The diamond mine. In, has somehow, some way, figured out a way to get a number of talents that I really liked and was interested in and put them in the most diluted possible faction that has made me lose complete interest in everyone involved. I was no. on here when Tyler Russ made his debut about how good he was, how excited I was to see him more. I've been talking since Undisputed Era about how much I liked Roderick Strong, how I thought Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly were the two best guys in there. Before even Undisputed Era, I was like, well, Roddy Strong's going to bring a lot because I like him so much. This Bobby Fish, Roderick Strong, even 
Oh, it was that they have a new guy who we haven't really seen wrestle just hanging out, so I don't care about him. Malcolm Bivens has had nothing but failures as a manager. Every time he comes out, the, whoever he's managing disappears a day later. Like, it's no fault of his on that, but at the same time, he's got nothing on NXT TV to say he's got a good track record. So it's like, I always think he's good and I'm excited. And then they've put him together in this group where I just go, yeah, the only person I gave a shit about in this match was Kushida. 100%. I loved Kushida. Didn't care about anything else. Well, that's just how good is Koshida. That's true. Like, how good is Koshida, man? <laughs> so good. Um, you could not care about a lot of things, but Koshida. That's a good point. You no, know, I don't even think that, um, like, Malcolm Bivens, and even when, you know, his life before at Stokely Hathaway, I think the, yeah. I think that probably his biggest the biggest thing he had and it worked well was MJF and Evolve. Yeah. And like Beyond and those whatever's over there. Yeah. But you're missing it if you don't have someone who's got like charisma. Like Roddy's never had charisma. Roddy's good at what he does, but he's never had charisma. Yeah. These other guys, no. So and I love me some Bobby Fish. You no. Know. I'm better with Kyle. Yeah, but somehow they figured out a way to just kind of make me not care. And that's what I think is like the crazy bit about it is how much I liked these guys and how at this point I'm like, meh. Yeah. Um, let's see. In the chat, let's look at Justin real quick. He says, Bobby Fish being mad at Roddy Strong doesn't make any sense. He's mad at Roddy because of the Undisputed Era breaking up when he should be mad at Cole. Yeah, dude, I I'm don't get it and I'm not into it. Uh, and then uh, Paley Blue says, I guess you do like the Nick Gage Jericho stuff if you liked Gage's tweet. I liked Gage's tweet, uh, but we were talking for a while about, about my feelings on that. I'm really nervous about the possible dilution of of Nick Gage as a character. Um, but uh, if you get the chance to go back and listen to this episode on podcast or on YouTube, we started the show... We're only we're talking about returns, and we're about to wrap it up just talking about a few highlights here and there. This whole show has been basically about returns. But we talked for a long time about Nick Gage and Jericho and that program. Uh, so I would encourage you to go back and check out the beginning of it. Um, the other thing, unless there's something you wanted to say specifically about it, that happened in NXT is the Karrion Cross stuff. So people are really upset that on Raw, Karrion Cross lost a match to Jeff Hardy in a roll-up uh, where Jeff Hardy cheated by pulling his tights and getting his feet on the rope. So he cheated twice to get one over on on Karrion Cross. Yeah. I wasn't as bothered by it. People were really upset because he came out with no fog and no scarlet. I wasn't really – I personally wasn't bothered by it. I mean, I get it. I think you have a lot of room to grow at this point. But at the end of the day, if you watch the NXT stuff, Karrion Cross is still a bad motherfucker. And Joe made a reference of, of – mm-hmm baby's day out effectively talking about cross's little field trip over to raw yeah. kind of undermining cross and a lot of the story has been about joe calling cross young and inexperienced so i think the idea of a former world champion like jeff hardy catching a win over a young champion who is inexperienced by cheating and getting one over on him is fine it's actually storyline like it works with it Joe can use that. You're you didn't even how could you have fallen for such a stupid trick? You know what I mean? Um did either of you see any of the cross stuff? I did. What'd you think of it? Um, I know people are upset about, you know, without Scarlet and all of that other shit. But I think yeah. really, if anything, it was a litmus test to see how is this guy going to be you know, received without all the extra shit. So it's yeah. almost like, you know, enhancement talent, but you've got a guy who actually has a title of your yeah. company and whatnot. So, I mean, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like, well, did it work? No, maybe. I don't know. But I think that there is something about his packaging 
with the entrance and with Scarlet and all of that. And even like when he does, you know, promos here and there, and then she's there, you know, there's just, there's something about that mm-hmm. that makes him interesting. This was, you know, carrying cross on the Indies. That's all it was to me. Cause you mm-hmm. didn't have Scarlet. You didn't have a fancy entrance. It was cross on the Indies trying to make it. I wasn't bothered. I could see that. I could see that. What I liked about it was that a lot of that stuff is distraction. And how many times have I said how much I feel like Karrion Cross is more of an entrance than anything else? He'll come out brutally violent on people, but a lot of times it's jobbers and stuff. And it wasn't until his Finn Balor match that I said, okay, now he's proven he can do this. He can really do this. But a lot of him is bells and whistles, and I like the idea of bringing him out without bells and whistles and being like, how does the crowd, crowd react? And is the crowd forced to pay attention? Who is this guy? He's wearing, wearing a championship. He still has crazy good music, and the lighting is still red. Like, he still has an identifiably different type of entrance. But without the fog and without the woman to be distracting, you don't have any choice but to look. And then after the match, they put a mic in front of him, made him talk, and he did great. He did fine. No problems with it. So, I don't know. I get it. I get the critique. I didn't hate it, though. I didn't fucking hate it. And I felt like the, his presence here, the back and forth with Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe on the mic is fucking flawless. It's absolutely insane okay. how good he is. But the whole story throughout the whole show being that Joe's trying to corner Cross, and Cross is sneaking around Joe's back. That means we are getting to a Cross and Joe storyline. And hell, maybe Joe chokes out Cross and gets the title off of him and Cross goes on to the main roster and that's that. I don't think I would hate it because I think that Joe is so legitimate. I don't think that it hurts Cross to have a loss to Joe. I just don't. No. I don't think so. I don't think having a loss to Joe by anyone is, you know, is a bad thing. I think that, you know, it almost it's almost like a badge of honor. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. A loss to him. What's the problem? Because a loss to him is better than, I don't, I don't know, a loss to, I don't know. Adam Cole or Gargano? Yeah. The six-year seniors? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it kind of reestablishes Joe as a force and a fighter, and he's not here just to goof around. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's, I think, I think it could work. But I didn't have a lot to say about it. I just had to say that about it. Uh, was there anything, Clump? I know you didn't get to check out a ton of NXT the past two weeks. Was there anything that stood out that happened in NXT that you even saw like newsworthy that you you want to make sure we didn't drop the ball on? A heck of a lot. I didn't. I really didn't see a lot. Um, you guys. Honest, you guys a lot of business was, as usual. Yeah, you guys nailed what I thought. Um, I am curious to see what more they can do with Karrion Cross. Um I, I like the idea of a Karrion Cross Samojo feud. I myself don't really think it's a great look with the loss. Like I get it, mm-hmm. but it, it doesn't help if you can build it in, so maybe it'll work out. I hope they do. I hope they don't just treat NXT like this bubble of separateness, you know? Yeah. But at the same time Joe made Brock look kind of fucking like a chump. Mm-hmm. I mean, he got Brock fired up because he made Brock look like a chump. I mean, Samoa Joe lost that match, but he had Brock Lesnar reeling. And Brock Lesnar was red and sweaty and being choked out and slobbering on himself. And you're like, holy shit, Samoa Joe is choking out Brock Lesnar. So Joe does not come off as someone to fuck with. So No. Like I, I agree with you that carrying cross in this this murder sort of nonstop no losing kind of kind of a, a record is awesome, but I do think if you have to take a loss to lose, if they're not gonna let him relinquish the title, yeah. Joe's not the worst person you could put in that way. You're not wrong, but I'm partial to yeah. Joe because I think he would murder me if I'm not. Yes, that's fair. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like Joe. Knock knock. What? No. <laughs> you don't like me? What? <laughs> uh, Amanda, was there anything you thought we missed over the week uh, or the past two weeks? 
that you want to make sure that we talked about specifically? No, no. I mean, and it, it was weird because, like, okay, Great American Bash was kind of, eh, you know, except for yeah. the LA Night shit. Um, and I really just don't, I don't know what the on the show. I mean, really for me, it was like, okay, like Diamond Mine didn't do it for me, and I'm like, it's just yeah. another she does squashing people you know and yeah but frankie monet is very interesting to me her character kind of has me puzzled yes so we'll see as things I'm, I'm i'm very curious about frankie monet very interested i do get the impression without trying to be a dick mm -hmm. she came in with such fervor and so many people talk about how good she is and she had so much buzz out of impact mm -hmm. but her matches have not been great and her wrestling no. has been off and it's been heavily choreographed and missing spots and weird mm -hmm. i almost wonder if she's got a little bit of the curse of being on the indie so long that she became a big fish in a small pond she just wasn't around people better than her for so long that she's almost having to dumb down what she can do in general. And she's not, she's, I mean, she's in a roster now where the women are, are touted as being the best in the absolute world. And yeah. I think it shows. Cause when she came in, I was like, Oh, there's no reason she shouldn't go straight to the main roster. And yeah, like, yeah now I'm watching her. Like, I don't know. Uh, George, George is in the chat says because she's facing jobbers. Yeah. I thought about that too, that maybe just the other person is, is off, but her timing doesn't look like it's making up for it. I, I don't know that it's, uh, it goes, uh, wait till she faces someone like EO. And that's kind of what I'm holding on to. I agree with that a hundred percent. Like there's part of me that's going like, how much is it the other person versus her? Okay. But there's, a big part of me that's just like, I'm, I'm just not impressed yet. And I, I just was hoping to be by now. And I agree. She is in there with a bunch of jobbers. We need to put her in there with at least a Zoe Stark. We yeah. got to get, we got to get her around somebody that's, that's at least going to hold up their end because I think that she's expecting something out of her, 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 her partner, as it were, that she's not getting. I think she's not able to compensate for, for them either. And, at this point, I, I'm not impressed, and I was really express, expecting to be impressed based off what I've seen in the past. She does also seem a little slow. She keeps doing this like, that weird knee slide thing where instead of bouncing off the ropes or into the turnbuckle, she like slides on one knee. But it's like clunky, and her knee pad seemed to get like caught on the canvas, so she's just like, I'm like, I'm like, stop doing that. I don't know what's going on with that, but but yeah, I agree. Yeah. I want to see her in the ring with someone like an EO. But as of right now, I'm kind of going like. I don't know if this is what I thought we were getting. You know what I mean? But maybe it's also because some of the other talent in there are Io Shirai. Is Zia Lee. You got Candice LeRae. You got some, you got Dakota Kai. You got incredible talent in the wrestling every week. And you're like, it's hard to shine there. It is. Yeah. Amanda? You know, it. it's really interesting because when you think of, oh, you know, on the indies and impact, well, who was around? Well, people like Tessa Blanchard, you know, mm. and I've seen some good ones with her and Tessa. I mean, I've seen good ones with her versus Rosemary. I mean, so, Andy, right? but I think it's because she's almost, I think her character handicaps her. It, it you mm. know, it's not her, it's almost like it's forced. So it's more for her, like, okay, I got to be this, the character and not, you know, the way I look. Yeah. The bleh, bleh, can't speak Spanish right now. Huh. You know what I mean? The oh, the Vera Loca. loca. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I get that, you know, not everybody is going to end up like Tamara Grimes, where you're just like this character and, you know, they find it and, you know, you run with it. With her, I think it's mostly probably the character, and that probably is a distraction from her actual wrestling. Yeah. That's why I said, Clump, it's, I think it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, I agree. Clump, any thoughts on it? Nah, you guys are nailing it yeah. pretty good. All right. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, anything else you thought we missed, Amanda, before we wrap this up? Go to last call. No, I think we did good. Yeah, I think. 
given the circumstances of missing about two weeks on this one because of the way our, our shows kind of pan out, I feel really good about talking about all the returns and just barely hitting some of the highlights of the, of the wrestling. And the next week, we'll be back to reviewing the shows themselves in their entirety. We're going to have night one of Fight for the Fallen and the just another did night one. Again? Back no, 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 they just did two fighter. Well, yeah, they did Fighter Fest for two weeks, and then the next two weeks are Fight for the Fallen. Why? Injuries? Well, I have. I assume it's to sell tickets and to give excuses for some of the stuff they're going to do, right? Like, I don't think they make surprises on any random dynamite. Like, I feel like that's so far been a thing. Anyone who shows up, any surprise happens on the non-dynamite episodes. Dynamite episodes are for the, the same old, same old. So I feel like that's why they're packing it up is because I think for the for these four weeks, they're going to have debuts and returns and stuff like that that's my but gut feeling remember, and to sell tickets next, next week however many days it is tony khan is supposed to announce something alive another alive event so i think it's another pay-per-viewish type of thing mm-hmm. um no one's been talking really about that as much as other things but um i'm curious my thing is, can you not be allergic to the West Coast? Thank you. I have I a feeling. Vegas, West Coast. That's me. That's Las Vegas. As a journalist who makes up stuff, I would say that my gut is, is they're likely to be making an announcement about doing live house shows. That as they hit the road, they're going to be hitting the road doing non-televised showings as well, which they have not done in the past. Oh, no, 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 no. They're so I would say it's now it's like fuck yeah. that you're opening the forbidden door of injury yeah so, i think injury becomes an issue but i also think that the other option that we may hear is that dark and elevation would potentially be filmed or even rampage um however they do the filming on it would potentially be filmed separate from dynamite probably dark if i would imagine the dark and elevation i think will be se- will be separate yeah if it's not that they're doing house shows it's that those will be filmed separately those will be the house shows, effectively. We're going to go on tour good. with Dark and Elevation, and we'll be going on tour with Dynamite as two separate tours. Sweet. Or, you know, in the same city, maybe, but two different nights or some shit. I have a feeling it'll be that, something like that. Yeah, I don't think they have enough, they don't have enough oomph or interest to break the roster up in two. Yeah. Because I tell you this, yeah. I, would, I would pay money to go see part of a roster yeah. that you might not know who it's going to be because they're going to have some misleading poster with people on it. And you're like, Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I hear that too. Um, I agree. I think that we'll see what they say when they say it. I think it's going to be this coming up Wednesday. We'll be back to talk about it on the, this coming up Thursday to let you guys all know. Jeremy does say (laughs) AEW has all these injuries, but Tony Khan's wants to shoot shots at WWE because AEW doesn't have a performance center. Like there's something to brag about. That's true too. Like he's when he said that, I was like, I don't think he knows what happens at the performance center. I don't think he understands the importance of it and what it does. So I don't think. He I think that if he did, so well, I think if he also understood the performance center, he would go out of his way to make sure the Nightmare Factory was a lot more like the performance center. But yeah. it's not. But guys, you got a Cody and stuff. So. But that's yeah. Story. That is another story for another day. Thank you guys for coming through and having a drink with us. Your drinking buddies here at the dive bar of the IWC. Don't forget to go to New Wave Coffee, newwave.co, N-O-O-W-A-V-E dot C-O, and pop in that promo code CHEERS to get 10% off your bag of coffee. Also, go support our friend over at TW Takes Podcast. If you go to TWTakesPodcast.com slash TWTs and put in the promo code dive bar, you can get like 25% off his already incredibly well-priced t-shirts fastest shipping in the biz clump is there anything you wanted to shout out before we go no i'm good let's bounce let's bounce amanda jane anything you want to shout out before you go where can people find you uh well people can find me at ms amanda jane instagram and on twitter and i know next week is going to be very bootylicious Oh, that sounds like a spoiler about Clump, if I'm not mistaken. So stay I tuned. Think it might be a spoiler about. Yeah. Clump. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, guys, go to wrestlingonrocks.com for all of our links, all of our stuff, our shop, things like that. 
uh, send us a DM if you're interested in the Wrestling on the Rocks Episode 1 shirt. We have a few in stock in hand at limited sizes and limited numbers. So if you give us a reach around through the old DM, we can uh, help get you one at a very reasonable price and get it shipped out to you straight away. So hit us up. Let us know what you're looking for. Uh, Justin, if you're in the chat, I was not able to secure one in your size. I apologize. Um, <laughs> but... Guys, we are at Wrestling on the Rocks, at WOTR, the show. I am at Ref Marsh, and this is Last Call. We will be back on Tuesday for another episode one. Until then, guys, that's Last Call. Hey, producer lady here. Thanks for tuning in. Continue to support us or buy us a drink by following and putting the I and subscribe on Twitch. Or subscribe and review our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to us. Cheers. I would never have a drink that's last on the rocks.